Welcome to Uptown Rumble, heavy music in the Bronx. My name is Stephen Payne, director of the Bronx County Historical Society. Today is April 17th, 2024, and here for what will be a very interesting oral history, um, I'll let the oral history narrators introduce themselves. Um, go ahead. Um, mainly known as Gigi by uh, most of the people in the hardcore scene, uh, but my name is Afrodita Cano. I'm a drummer and a singer and uh, a farmer and <laughs> a life liver. <laughs> and I've played in a lot of hardcore bands and a lot of different bands throughout my lifetime. We can get into that a little later. It's a long list. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Proof of purchase is why I'm here. <laughs> Hello, I'm uh, Jose, Jose E, or Jose Escalin. Uh, I play guitar on the band POP or Proof of Purchase. Um, right now, I'm in Bridgeport. Not in the bunks anymore, but I'm here ready to release the past. See what's going on there. Great, Martha. Great. Well, thank you so much for uh, being here, and um, and let's take it back. Uh, Gigi, we'll start with you. Um, and why don't you share whatever you know about your family history and background? You know, you can go as far back as you want, um, or you know, if you just want to start with your parents, that's fine too. And the story of how your family ended up in the Bronx, whatever you know about it. Right, so there was this thing called slave trade. No, <laughs> yeah, well, you want to start there? Let's do it. <laughs> that's, the, that's the truth. Ancestors, ancestors. No, well, um, my mother is Puerto Rican, and uh, she lived in Puerto Rico throughout a period of her life, and moved to New York. My dad was Dominican, and he lived. Uh, they they met in New York, and uh, and then they got together and had me and my sisters. But um, yeah. We were raised in the Dominican Republic for a little while, and we were also did some time in Puerto Rico. I mean, not in Puerto Rico, but in Jersey with uh, my mom's mom. Um, and then I guess there were issues. I was born in Manhattan. Okay. Yeah. And then and then we just kind of always like moved around for a little while and stuff, and then and then we finally like came to the Bronx after a series of events. Sure. And um, <clears throat> and then we kind of were there for. For quite a long, that was probably the longest place that we've ever really lived at, was the Bronx. Yeah. Aside from like afterwards, now that, that I'm living in other places. Yeah. How old were you when your family like ended up in the Bronx? Do you remember? I was probably, maybe like, maybe like five or something, because I remember having to repeat uh, first grade. A couple of times because we moved around from Jersey, Dominican Republic, Jersey, and then sure. back over to uh, to and back into the Bronx. I see. Yeah, I see. yeah. Um, and what neighborhood did you live in in the Bronx? We lived in a lot of neighborhoods in the Bronx. Actually, yeah, 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 one yeah. of the first ones was actually right across the street from the Edgar Allan Poe uh, uh, okay, Museum okay. that's up there in Bay yeah. Bridge. We did Kingsbridge as well. Uh, then we did a lot of the South Bronx and a lot around in the South Bronx, like Freeman area. Um, we did a little bit of further inward, like, uh, Clay Avenue and that area okay. too. Yeah, sure. Um, a few other places that I can't really remember too well. Yeah. But yeah, like we, we, moved around a lot. yeah, we moved around a lot. Do you have, um, very many like clear memories from, uh, like the other places you lived before the Bronx? Well, yeah, Washington Heights, yeah. definitely. You yeah. know, I have uh, some memories there, uh, Dominican Republic and in Jersey. Okay, okay, so yeah. from a lot of a, a few yeah. different places, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and what what are some of the things, at least, you know, if you, if you care to share, like, things that you remember about the different places you lived before the Bronx? We'll get a lot more into the Bronx in a second, but... Mm, oh yeah well depending on where right dominican republic is dominican republic you yeah. know so that's like a, just a whole different culture yeah sure what i remember from that is just the electricity always going out never having water bathing outside when it rained yeah, yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> the songs of my aunt when the lights will go out yeah <laughs> you know wow uh, my grandfather uh, he was a sugarcane uh farmer and um always like 
bothering him when he's sleeping and whispering in his ears. <laughs> my mom or my dad would tell us things to tell him in his ears while he was sleeping. And I don't know if he was asleep or not, but he would always like answer and we would get scared because we'd be like, oh my God, he's actually awake. <laughs> and we would run. <laughs> um, yeah, Washington Heights too was a... a Washington Heights was interesting too because it like kind of it still felt like Dominican Republic. Yeah, yeah, you know, and um, and 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 that was like we had maybe a couple apartments, but there were times where we were staying with friends and stuff like that because of situations that were sure. going on. Sure. Um, and then I think I'm not entirely sure how it how it happened, but I remember like getting taken. Uh, I think I, I don't know if we were like in a shelter or something, but then like we went to Jersey, I guess, again for a little while, and yeah. my mom left us with our with my grandma for a while, and then and then when she came to pick us up, we moved into the Bronx. I see, I yeah. see, I see. And with the the various places you lived in the Bronx, um, what kinds of like buildings did you live in, and, and what were they like at the time? Some of them were pretty nice. The ones up here, like on the concourse and stuff like yeah. that, were cool. Like Tremont and that area too. They weren't too bad. <clears throat> nice. They, they, those bigger apartment like buildings, uh, where you have this extensive living room that a lot of people would always throw up a wall and have an extra bedroom. <laughs> the the parquet floors and all that. Yeah. Um, my mom always liked to to. She always liked to cover it with rug everything, and, sure. and or if not, she would always just like tear off everything and just like uh, sand it down and and always have that kind of floor and stuff. I don't know. She thought that it was nicer. It, it did make it nicer. Yeah, it yeah. did make it nicer. Some of these apartments were, were were pretty nice, and then some were really grimy. Yeah, you know? sure, sure. Some were hella grimy and stuff. Where <laughs> I remember once, me and my sisters were playing. We and my sister uh, were playing on. Uh, jumping from bed to bed in this one bedroom that we had and we opened the window because it was pretty hot and not that window hit the back of the building and we left it open when we went to bed and all of a sudden like our room was filled filled with fucking water bugs man like oh, giant oh, flying around we run outside we're like dad what the fuck you know <laughs> he's all like hitting all these freaking water bugs and stuff and, oh my god it was gross <laughs> I can't remember. I can't believe I remember that. Wow. But yeah, that was that was intense. But yeah, you know, and then, then you know there was that extreme too. When the the apartment was nice, but yeah. you know there there was always like that kind of issues happening and with the freaking bugs and the and the rats and stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um. So, I imagine this might be a complicated mm -hmm. answer since you moved around a lot, but what um elementary school or elementary schools did you go to? I went to PS twenty eight. Okay, okay, yeah. I see. I went to 28, and then after 28, I went to 147. Yeah. Which is also District 9 school. Yeah. And um, we worked a lot with 22 because we did music. Oh, okay. And I. Uh, okay, I see, um, I see. And, uh, and, then, and then it was Stevenson, right? After 147 was Stevenson. Okay, okay, I see, I see. Um, and with like your elementary and intermediate schools that you went to, you mentioned that you and your sister were um, in the music program. How'd you get into that? She got me into it. Ah, yeah, it okay. was an after school program in 28. Okay. And uh, yeah, she, it was a, it was a great thing she did for me. Actually, yeah. Cause it was a way to get out of the, out of the, the Bronx during the summer and stuff yeah. and, 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 and be exposed to, to music and, and other, people and people of different colors as well you sure, know? sure um yeah working with that is just like when we first started seeing like real white people yeah 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 yeah, yeah sure um and had you like been exposed to a lot of music at home what kinds of music if you heard me much music at home what kinds of music were you hearing oh salsa and merengue and bachata uh -huh. was uh -huh. always on the radio was always on yeah. the radio was always on and my mom with the spoons always cooking and hitting the <laughs> Hitting the pots with the spoons and dancing and her way oh way all over the place. So there was always flavor in the food. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what about in the neighborhoods you lived in? Um, do you remember much about the musical landscape? Of yeah, the yeah, yeah. There was a lot of a lot of bachata and merengue, a lot of salsa. There uh -huh. was a lot of hip hop. There was a lot of like dance hall reggae as well. Yeah, because yeah, we did sure. live in a, a 
there was a point where we did live in a, a in a Jamaican neighborhood. Oh, so there was a lot of that okay, okay. happening too. Wow. Um. Yeah, yeah, lots of yeah, yeah, lots of hip hop, obviously, and all that. Sure. That was mainly what was always around. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, did you get very like into hip hop yourself when you were coming up? Not really. I mean, because when we were coming up, we we were doing the drum and bugle core stuff. So we were ah. like, I was always focused on that stuff, and we were always focused on that. I mean, the music was around. Yeah, sure. And I indulged in it because it was around, yeah. you know, but it wasn't something that I would you know, go out of my way to look for. Yeah, sure. And and even when, when, when I started listening to like rock or metal and stuff, that was like really also my sister and her her influences. I see. Because I remember at first when I was just like, oh my God, you're into this kill your mother, kill your father thing, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and, you know, because, yeah. I was a little brat. <laughs> <laughs> how, how much older is your sister than you? She's one year older. Okay, one year older. Yeah. Okay, okay. So yeah. very close. And yeah, yeah. Her and I. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have yeah. elder sisters, but that we were the we were the ones that kind of took care of each other. I see. I for see. Uh, for the most most of it. Um. So, I I think I know the answer to this question, but for you know folks listening to this later on, they won't necessarily. <clears throat> what instrument did you start off playing? Contrabass. Oh no, I don't know. Okay. Yeah, wow. contrabass. It was like a tuba, oh, shit. but you throw it up on your shoulders. And I was probably like eight or nine years old. I remember this, and my mom was like, "Oh my god, that horn is bigger than you!" Because I was like so <laughs> tiny, and I'm like, "You're the tiniest one with the biggest horn." I, I don't know. I didn't feel that heavy to me. You know? Wow. <laughs> and I really enjoyed the sound coming out of it. It was big, and I was so tiny. <laughs> so, but I started with contrabass. Then I made my way into smaller instruments. I went into baritone, okay. mellophone, and then soprano at the end. I and see. those are all brass instruments in different keys. So soprano yeah. is like a trumpet in a different key. Mellophone is like a French horn in a different key. Baritone and euphoniums are, you know, in contrabasses also, but in a different key. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And uh, why? I guess why don't you keep like talking about the instruments you played on the way to to drums? Although I'm I'm sure it's not really a neat progression there because you probably played. Well, from that, from the brass stuff, like I I. I the drum corps really inspired it too. I mean, but oh, yeah, sure. but I was already already uh, getting my uh, my mentals wet with uh, with metal and hardcore and all that. And I like the I drums see. was just like, oh my god, I love this. I and see. so I went from brass to percussion, I and I see. played like the xylophone for a little while and other random percussions for a little while before yeah, sure. I started really getting into the drums. I, I had see. started getting into the drums after I had left the uh, drum corps, I and see. I just kind of like turned that into what it turned into <laughs> yeah sure so were you in the drum corps like all throughout high school too uh mainly junior high school okay, okay yeah okay, yeah high school high school was interesting there was a lot of things going on so i had to drop out i see I and see, I see. uh and so i think like at 16 was like the last last year i marched uh in the drum corps i see and there were you know th those drum corps were based out of the bronx they were summer youth programs that yeah. that we would tour around all summer long and it was great to have that and and so a lot of school, a lot of kids from a lot of different schools would join. We would always join up. And twenty two was one of our full, one of the points where we would uh, meet up and and have rehearsals at and stuff yeah. like that. And, but we started that in twenty eight. And so when we were already in high school, we had already our foot in the door. And but because we were still young, we had kind of like we would still go on tour and then like our our uh, our staff kind of like fixed our working papers a little bit so that we, we were able to do SYEP and pay sure. for our tour accounts and stuff like that. Sure. And um so we were the youngest ones always in wow. that in that situation. And uh and, and we just kinda grew with it, you know, and, and throughout high school it was still something that we were doing after school and on the weekends and or you know, we would do the tours in the summer and stuff and then yeah. like we would always have like these long weekends and go like to Camp Smith and have like these in extensive rehearsals and stuff. Because wow. imagine we would practice like maybe 13 hours for a 10 minute show. So yeah. it was it was pretty it was pretty intense and wow. and pretty disciplined, although I was probably the least disciplined. <laughs> <laughs> Such a rebel. <laughs> but <laughs> Oh, man. Yeah, I'm sure everyone wanted to kill me at some point. <laughs> So where all would you travel? Like, what's the furthest all place you'd go? All around the states. Wow. We would always, like, Canada, all along oh, the wow. East Coast, down a uh, little further into Middle America. Um, 
we were DCI East, uh, DC, well, yeah, Drum Corps International is like what the whole thing is called, and that we were like, an, uh, we, the first one was a Division Two Corps, which was the New York City Lancers, and then the, uh, and then afterwards was Kips, Kips Bay Boys and Girls Club. Oh, okay. Uh, they're based out, uh, they were based out of like, like Stevenson area and stuff. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, and so, uh, yeah, we, we uh, yeah, they were based out of different places. So, but but this was like a Division Three core, the last ones that we did, Garden State and all that stuff. That was like all, all the last ones that I did, at least. And my sister continued to march in like Division One cores and stuff like that afterwards. Okay, I see, yeah. I see, I see. Wow. Uh, so you were deep into uh, deep into this world for. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, but the, even then, I like I didn't really know how to read, and like, my teachers would always put the fingering underneath. I just have yeah. a good ear. I you see. Know, I so see, I was I see. able to always just like remember, and and just play what I heard. Yeah. You know. Um, so that was really cool because also when I went to when I when I got into Stevenson, I was able to get into the music program. I see, I see, I see. I didn't get into, I got into the music program through vocals because of my reading skills. My reading skills were so low, but again, my, my ear was good to pitch up and all that stuff, so. Uh, okay, okay. But I still continued uh, in, the, in, the, in the band, in the brass sections in the school when I was there in the beginning. I see. And you mentioned your sister's the one who kind of got you into, you know, Rock, metal, hardcore. Yeah, how did, how did well, alternative, happen? really. Yeah, yeah, you know, sure, like sure, the sure. Nirvana time, the Nirvana era. Like, uh, were they? What were those uh, bands that were really doing it at that time? Like Stone Temple Pilots Stone and Temple Pilots, uh, sure. Pearl Jam. Yeah. What are the other guys? Uh, uh, Tool, even. Yeah. Um, what were they called? Uh, oh man. This all music. Well, no, the, 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 that's, that's that one band that my sister liked a lot, too, and all that. I uh, can't remember. Those the guys that sang Rooster. What was, the, what was the name of that band? That was Stone Temple Pilots. No, that's Stone Temple Pilots. They had the harmony guys all the time. They were always doing the harmonies. Oh, my God, I can't believe I, I can't remember this name. Anyway, Soundgarden was also another project oh, that I really sure. liked and stuff. Oh. Jesus, how come I can't remember this? Oh, you know these guys. Yeah. Sure, the on no, that's not STP, man. I'll look up real quick. <laughs> um, yeah, I hate not yeah, 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 I know, yeah, I know. yeah, 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 um, yeah. Oh man, <laughs> Jesus. Do you know? Oh, Alice in Chains. Alice in Chains. Chains. There you go. Wow. Yeah, 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 yeah. Of course, you um, know this. Jesus. Do you know how your sister, how she first heard it? I mean, I'm sure it's a question to ask. I her, mean, but. probably just through through exposure in high school and stuff, yeah. and her friends. Yeah. Yeah. And because we didn't always have the same group of friends. Sure. Yeah. Sure, and I know you you mentioned uh, um, that you were uh, you know maybe a little scared or turned off by the music. At first, how did you start getting more into it? I don't know. I just became a rebel. No, I, well, and then I, I guess, I guess, I guess I start. Hmm. I, I, I guess when I really started understanding like the power of the drums, I was I like, see. okay, there's so much more freedom in what was happening in the drums. Than yeah. what was happening in other styles of music that I was listening to. I see. And so that 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 really motivated me. Yeah. And I was like, okay, well, I wanna I wanna play like this if I ever get to play this kind of like this instrument. You yeah. Know? So that was that was uh, but then before I even got more into that stuff, like I I, I started meeting people like Ramon and all that stuff in school, and then but I was listening more to like the underground stuff that was happening in the neighborhood or, or around us, you know. Sure. And then that kind of opened it up a little bit more. I you see. Know? And then I was like, okay, well, yeah. But, like, I, I really went more towards that that part of aggression more than, than like, the, the more mainstream kind of stuff. So the mainstream did take me a little bit to get into. I see. And the, I see. And the other stuff was just like, oh, my God, this is like, ah, let's do this, you know. I, I, just, I don't know, those the uh, the guitar sounds, the the fast drums, and I was just yeah. like, wow, this is this is where it's at, you know. So, do you remember, um, you know, maybe some of the pivotal 
Are there songs or albums or oh, bands from this wow. time for you? Uh, obituary, the incomplete. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. The incomplete. Um, Marauder. Oh, sure. Uh, yeah. Those were like, I don't know how I wound up with those tapes. Yeah, yeah. And, I was going to ask you. Yeah, I just... I don't know, maybe Adi even just like left those <laughs> at the house at one point or something. Were they copies or original ones? They were copies, I think. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, mixtapes. You know, wow. we did the mixtapes back in the days and yeah, stuff. Sure. And, and someone laid it down, you know. Wow. I know Jay Ray also like put me onto a lot of music. You put me onto a lot of music too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and Ramon as well, you know. Ramon actually, you know, our, our connection was like what kind of allowed me to meet all of these other people. You I know, see. He would always be like, come to these shows. <laughs> and some these house parties. <laughs> most of these um, folks you met at Stevenson at first, and then you started meeting everyone else. Is well, right? I met Frankie in junior high school. Oh, okay. Right. Okay, sure, sure, sure. Yeah, and that was an eye-opener, too, because he was the drummer in the school, you know? And I, <laughs> at that point, I was already starting to get my, like, not even really get my fingers wet with it, but I was already be, I was already kind of, like, it was already it was already calling my attention. I see. Because I was still playing brass at that point. Yeah, sure. And then him and this other friend Eddie that was a skater. Ah. Yeah, and they were yeah those two guys. <laughs> wow. And what, what what junior high school was that again? One forty seven. One forty seven. Yeah yeah, yeah. 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 Wow. I see. I see. And then Ramon and and who else did you meet at um, Stevenson other than Ramon? That played in music or that was a part of well because like we had a couple of I had a couple of homegirls yeah. that played music but I never um I, I never really saw them with a band I see I see I see. but they were like they were like the gothy girls and uh-huh. it was just like oh my god what is this fashion I love it you know <laughs> <laughs> oh my god right and and yeah I think I think I just like one day followed them around and they're like, who are you? <laughs> and I'm like, you guys are cool. Can I hang out? You know? <laughs> and then that, and then that's history. Because, like, you know, one of those ladies is still, like, one of my great friends now. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Um, and do you remember um, the first uh, kind of live show that you went to? Um, was it in the Bronx? The house parties probably yeah, were yeah. the live situations. Yeah, sure. And then I remember my first show at CB's was with Marauder was uh, opening that one up or, or closing that one down. Okay, okay, yeah. wow. Um, but that was like, and then, you know, and then it was like CB matinees from then on in for, for like forever. Sure, you know? sure. And then like whatever show I can get to. But yeah, the house parties. The house parties were, were where it's at. I even threw house parties before I started playing the bands because I was just like, I love this, you know, and we're like in my in the apartment in the Bronx, and we're just like, Pah! Billy Club is playing, <laughs> and oh, sure. Vice Reserve, and all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You wow. guys played too, probably. No, what I meant this maybe. Yeah, I think what I meant this too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, wow. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bringing down the house, it, uh, our homegirls' backyard too. A lot of shows there. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Um. Yeah, what 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 were some of the bands that were playing, you know, during that early period as far as the house parties that you went to? Uh, that I supported and yeah. like to uh, like to spend time with. Uh, well, the oh, right, Driven by Hatred, uh-huh. Irate, uh-huh. Uh, Blackout, Bodementis, Billy Club. Well, at that I think Billy Club still wasn't as formed. Then, That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, but but then but then they got it on the roster for sure. Yeah, sure. Um, oh man, who else was around at that time? Uh, rah, 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 rah. well, yeah, but 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 this was a little later oh. when we started, like you know, even with like the Queens guys, that was still a little later too. Where, like everybody gets hurt and denied and yeah. relentless and all those guys. Um, but um, but yeah, it was like uh, yeah, I rate Billy Club, uh, Blackout, Go to Mentis, um, Driven by Hatred, yeah. Um, Wow, I'm trying to think who else that I can think about it. That's a foreign chamber, probably, possibly a little something, something. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, District Nine, obviously Fahrenheit yeah, sure. 451. Candiria, Candiria yeah. was around yeah. too, but again, they were like more a little later because yeah. of the. That was a little later too because of like getting out of the Bronx. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. thinking about like before I even started going to shows in the city. 
and stuff like that. And and yeah, those like those were those were like that primarily like some of my biggest influences. I see, I see. And uh, what was the pit situation like, like in house parties? <laughs> oh my god, I was like the <laughs> queen of that shit. <laughs> I always oh, ran right. amok, and if you didn't run amok with me, I would make them run amok. <laughs> I don't know why, but that, I think that's why too. Because before I even started playing drums, I would just go to shows and then. The music, I'd be like, oh my god, I can't taste this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I have to start hitting and punching the walls and the floors. And, oh my god. Yeah, I think I blew out like every knuckle possible. Busted my nose so many times. Fell. So, oh my god. Um, and, and then is- I was everybody's puppet too, because everybody would carry me around and spin me everywhere and just walk on people's heads, mm-hmm. cartwheeling, flipping. It was intense. It was intense. I mean, we we would, you know... The house would leave with holes. I mean, we would leave with holes in the house, you know. Yeah, yeah no, we, we we would destroy some shit. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. this is happening in, in living rooms and, and backyards, right? In living rooms, right? yeah. In apartments, yeah, yeah, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. And, and no yeah. venues. This is an apartment. Oh, it turned you know? into a venue. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely. Definitely. Wow. Um, yeah, yeah. And what what did your, your um, you know, family think of... Uh, this music or did they even know how much you were into it my mom never really cared too much yeah she 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 wasn't she's yeah she's just in her own little world <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so sure. she didn't care and dad wasn't really too present at that time i see i see sure so uh I, it, yeah i called the shots in that sense yeah. in that way a lot, a lot of times they didn't you know as long as we it, because I guess she felt that as long as it was in the house and we saw what was happening, you know, she didn't, she wasn't really like against it, you sure, know, sure. and she always welcomed all of my friends and everyone and stuff like that, you know, and um, so, yeah, I mean, and, and, and I probably brought her to a couple of shows and stuff and she, she would also get all like, oh my God, what's happening when they like the pit would start opening up and you know, I'm like, mom, just go to the back a little bit. Just to expose her a little bit to what we were doing, you know, because she knew that we would do like the brass thing and, and, you know, and so then when we started like introducing like the hardcore and metal into our home, (laughs) into our living room, (laughs) she's like, Dios mio, what is this, you know, (laughs) but she welcomed it, you know, she never, she never, um, she never made us turn our back away from it. As long as we were happy doing what we were doing, she always was a support. So that was, that was also really cool. Wow. Yeah, she better have been. Yeah. <laughs> um, aside from you know getting copies of tapes from friends or any you know things like that, were there other ways you'd get tapes? Um, would you buy tapes ever or get them through other means? Record them. Oh yeah, sure, Record sure, sure. Them. Sou was like one of my high bigger uh, ways to to be able to listen to this kind of stuff and yeah. hear live bands even at that time. Sure. And I would just sit there every time the show came on and record, uh-huh. and then I'll have that for a while and just, yeah, just enjoy it that way. Yeah. Um, at some point, I started buying my own things, but then I always, again, I always had friends that would always just like give me stuff and just put me on to like what's going on and stuff. So I never really ventured out more than what my friends were giving me at those at, at that time. Even now, still sometimes I have a not an issue. But I, I just I just don't have that kind of time sometimes to yeah. just sit and really like look through libraries of music. That's Although right. I should because I'm a musician and <laughs> this is part of what I do is listen. Sure. But um but it definitely like it was mainly like I was always directed by my, what my surroundings were were uh, a part of. Sure. Sure. Um and when you did start buying tapes were there any places in the bronx you would go to get you know hardcore metal tapes or would you go we we would always go hop the train and go to the city yeah yeah Yeah. 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 (laughs) um and what about um you know the story of uh when you you know did start playing drums how did that come about was it as a part of a band initially or did you start on your own i have to thank tito okay I have to thank Tito for that because Tito had a drum set that he was going to throw away. And I was like, uh, bring it. <laughs> it was like this. It was a Rogers, actually. A Rogers. It was a, 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 a hand-me-down kit. It was like I had no snare. I had like the tom-tom. And I tuned that up to make it sound like a snare. I had a, a crash that was actually one 
part of a hi hat, <laughs> and then this crazy Frankenstein double bass pedal. That was, I think, one was like a Tom and the other one was a Pearl or something, or DW and a Pearl. And and I just made it work. Wow. I just made it work, and I would throw on, you know, my friends' bands. I would throw on like everybody, like everybody gets her Marauder. I'd even throw on these guys, and I just, you know, like freaking, and just started playing with it. And I just started playing with it, you know. So that was uh, that was what got me into it. And then that's like uh, on the train. Oh, okay. okay I would I'm listen sure. to music on the train on my way to school, and I'll just sit there and double bass with it. Uh huh. So when I got behind a drum set, I was actually able to play. And I remember this because I had this one band. Well, my first band ever, right? <laughs> it was uh, called Obscurity with a friend of mine, Roach. And uh, and we were like this black metal band, you know. Okay, okay, wow. <laughs> it was really cool. I didn't know how to play at all. He was just like, "You play drums?" I was like, "Yeah, sure, I can play drums." I got behind the kid, and that was like my most solid point, the wow. double bass. And they're like, "Oh shit, yo, you play!" And I'm like, <laughs> "I'm still trying to figure out what to do with my hands, but sure, we're doing oh, it," you know. <laughs> and that, you know, I was probably like 15, 16 oh, before shit. I actually okay. started, you know. And then that, you know, that was just like a taste test and kind of left it for a while while I tried to try to figure stuff out because at that point, again, a lot of things were happening in the family sure. where I had to just kind of figure it out. I had to drop out of school. I had to, you know, and then I started, you know, and, and then, and then, and then I met this guy and then I was like, let's play in a band together. And he lives so close by. So I was like, all right. He was like, no, you don't know how to play. And I said, try me. No. <laughs> <laughs> how did you all meet? <laughs> Some shows or something, shows. probably, right? Yeah, shows. Someone's backyard show. <laughs> yeah, I have to be, that, that was the only way. Or maybe There's, we went to go see Burn Down or something. Yeah, probably Burn Down. Probably. Yeah. yeah. And that's how I found out about her. I was like, there's a bit of place around to live in the Bronx. Like, what? <laughs> Let me find out. <laughs> yeah, and it, when it turned out that it, I was like right up the block. Wow. Where he lived. And uh, I think... Uh, did, did we jump? We jump out together, and I, that was we got in sync. Once I see in sync, all right. Yeah, it was go. just yeah. But that's that's the way I play. If, yeah, if, if I'm in too. sync with that person, I don't have to let them know when to stop, when to speed up, when to jump, when to like she could tell what I'm doing. I can tell what she's doing. We make me stay by like you know what we're in sync. Yeah. So wow. Let's do the shit then. Yeah, yeah. I think that was, yeah, that was yeah. Much, yeah, yeah. And then I was like, let's get Marty to sing, and then. And then that's it. It was a wrap. What what year was Proof of Purchase formed? And we're going to go back to Jose's backstory leading up to this in a second. Well, but I don't even know. Like, well, I was like eighteen, maybe. Was it was it late? Maybe was late ninety eight. Yeah, around. Yeah, around there, probably. Yeah. Late ninety eight. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. I see. I see. I see. So the the black metal band you were in a few years before, and then. Right. Weren't really in. Right, right, in, right. Until proof of purchase. Right, right. Ah, I see, I see, I see. And that was like my first real, like, project, musical project outside of like what was happening with the schools or whatever and stuff. Sure. And, and yeah, where I was able to actually work on creativity because we we also respected each other's creative process and kind of just we always did what we felt most. Uh, organic and natural I see. for us and stuff. So I see. Now with um, with your very first band you were in, did you all ever play any shows or just a few, like rehearsals, a few rehearsals? You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you never put on corpse paint. <laughs> no, 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 no. But we did go to a lot of goth bars at that time, and I did, you know, do the the time with the with the straight hair and the black lips and the black. <laughs> clothing you know <laughs> now i look like a fucking rainbow but you know <laughs> it's all good <laughs> wow wow um so jose let's uh uh let's take it back for you and then we'll, we'll come up to proof of purchase with you too i know there's um some some bands uh to talk about before proof of purchase for you also but um but let's start with your family history and background and how your family ended up in the bronx that far, let's see. But I know, um, I know my mom was from PR, Puerto Rico. My dad was from Puerto Rico too. But we were in in New York because I was born in New York, and it was Brooklyn, Flushing Avenue. Okay. And far back, so I was probably six years old or something, probably. And the snow, 
And I think after that, let's go to Puerto Rico. Like, huh? <laughs> I had no idea how to speak Spanish. I was all like, shit. Wow. Um, all right. And I was, we went to PR. We moved to PR completely. Which part of PR? Uh, if you remember. Uh, San Jose, Rio Piedras. Okay. Like Georgia. Was like, very poor family. <coughs> My dad was always working. He was always hustling. And, um, yeah, I think I was six years old. And I was trying. It was hard for me because I was like, I didn't know Spanish. Wow. I'm like, okay, I'm going to do this. And, and I would say we moved out there, trying to learn Spanish again, from English to Spanish. And I was like, all right. And it was hard for me in school because I was like, I could not. Couldn't do it because I was like, I don't speak Spanish. <laughs> uh, uh, and after that, I mean, we lived there. We lived there for how many years? I don't even know. I know we we turned back, decided to, oh, we're going back to back to New York. Like what? Uh, like I had no English. What the fuck? I used to learn all this Spanish. <laughs> like yo, give me a break. <laughs> I was like turf. I was like, oh shit. It was like, yeah, we're going back. I don't know where. You said the Bronx. I was like. Didn't the Bronx sound bad? I was like, oh, whatever. <laughs> I was like, shit. Um, but back in PR, it was like, uh, what do you call it? We lived in San Jose, then we, uh, we moved to La Zona Bancaria. La Zona Bancaria is like we have all the big buildings, all the banks, everything. Yeah. It's like a mini city. And um, I say from there on, that's, even though when we were like in San Jose, the music was always there, so I had started salsa, merengue, and and believe it or not, my dad, I don't know what, I had an A track. And I yeah. played that every freaking day. A track, A track. <laughs> I was like, yo, and I had this recording audio, like old school stuff. And I was recording, recording music, no English. It was just, it was all Spanish music. And I was like, right. so I, I got into music, but I never played music. But I was, I was forced to dance. Uh huh. For sure, because like, you did music, you better learn how to dance. Uh huh. Like, shit. That was something that my mom, my family, like, you need to dance, you need to dance. I'm like, for what? Just dance. Whatever. Um, yeah. Do you yeah, remember? Because every party I go with family, I'm like, dance, like, <laughs> shit. <laughs> <laughs> but I got good, and whatever. It was fine. It, it, it was, especially salsa was, it was a hard thing to dance, but yes. it was, got into it, start learning, with the step, did that, my English was a little easier. The bachata was different because my dad, my dad used to play bachata all the time, all the time bachata. And I was like, he's a guitar. You, yeah. could, you could hear it. It was like, wow. It was so technical. It was like, damn. My mom used to be like, don't play that crying man's music. I was like, shit. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> what the heck? I was like, dude, oh, this is like a, a guitar. It was a small guitar called Cuatro. Yeah. Uh -huh. Called Cuatro. I was like, wow. But I never got to play it. Growing up, but I always see it, and I always go to my family or anything else, and they'll have family members that play music, and I guess they have the music background and everything, because they did have it, and I, I wasn't able to play that. It was, I don't even know what they had to do with that. And I guess growing up, the more music I listened, the more I really got into music, and then I finally started hearing like 80s music, and I was like, no metal music at that time, because sure. you, you could barely, metal music in PR, hell no. Yeah. It was there, but sure. you have to look for it. Yeah. But there was no radio station playing it. There sure. was no way. And they would only play 80s music. Everything 80s, whatever, and before that, secondary, like whatever, the stuff. Like. And I got into the 80s music, I kind of stepped away from the Spanish music, even though I kept it. Like. But the 80s music was just, it was, it was fun. It was a lot of soundtrack, especially uh -huh. from Star Wars. Uh -huh. All this shit, I was like, yo, this music is great, all this stuff and everything else. And um, going on with the music, and I was got really into it. But I didn't know how to, how to even play or anything, but I like it, and I love it. And uh, finally, it was, uh, I know the topic is different. So I had to talk like my mom, my dad, where they came from, everything else. And my dad was into music. But finally, it hit me that there was a guy 
But we moved from San Jose. From San Jose, to uh, uh, I forgot the place. It was two big tower buildings next to Arizona Bacardi. What people could see from far away. Yeah. These two buildings. Dangerous area behind this dangerous. Don't go there. Like, uh, there was a guy got played guitar. Yeah. From the other building, I'm on the bottom, I'm on the 16th floor, and I could hear them. Wow. Hear the guy. And I could see through like, his window. It's far away. Van Halen. Oh. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know about him. That rap. But and then <clears throat> on TV, I started showing videos of metal bands, like not metal, like rock bands, whatever. Molly sure. Crew, everything else. Then and this guy played Van Halen. Wow. I'm like, and he got the guitar from Eddie Van Halen. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> And I was like, I, I need to play guitar. I need to play guitar. And it's like, it's like I saw this guy playing and every night. He would play the same song or the same song, but he knew the whole album. I was like, wow, man. And from there on, with the music scene, that you couldn't you couldn't find any metal music on the radio. You could only see it on TV. Sure. Like, they'll show like, like half an hour, less than less than 15 minutes. They'll play like a metal band or something. Or a rock band, not a metal band, a rock band. And that's when like, wow, man. I need to like, I got from the Spanish music to the rap music, and I really want to play and grew up with the music. And, uh, and the weird thing about it, I did meet a few, uh, few friends of mine that they were more into like the metal music. I, I didn't know about it. I had no idea they were into it. Yeah. Oh, but I about they were showing me some bands. I was like, yeah, this band here, Celtic Frost. Like, what? <laughs> Celtic Frost. Oh, wow. I, like, I was like, right there, I was like, the cover uh, to make a thing. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But that, cause that time I think I saw the movie Alien. I was like, oh, shit. That makes sense. Yeah. When I, when that album came out, I was like, and I bought the album, played the shit out of that. <laughs> and people like, satanic. Like you say, like, they'll call you like, satanic music, all this shit and everything else. I was like, okay, fine. Okay. And this this was this was in Puerto Rico when you yeah, bought the album. Yeah, and that right? was rare stuff. Wow. And um, and it's funny because then I found out the store at the mall, like not far from that area, and they had the metal album. I was like, oh, shit! But I was a little kid. Yeah, sure. I told my parents to wanted to like, yo, <laughs> I, need, I need to get this. <laughs> or uh, we do the on school. We had the summer job after like the break time. Yeah, sure. Summer job and like, hey, you go for the summer for like, on your break. You get paid this much money? Yeah. And then you got to buy all these albums. Wow. And it was, I kind of got introduced to like the, the hardest shit because I was like, so the first, um, there was other bands like S.O.D. Slayer. Oh, sure. I was like, wow. I was like, it wasn't like soft. It was like, I read the lyrics. I'm like, oh shit, they were right. <laughs> <laughs> but I love it. And it, it was fun going over the music. Wow. Um, I had a friend of mine, this other kid, totally different, but he liked metal music. But he never played the music that I played or that I got into. He introduced me to the first, I guess, religious or Christian band, Striper. <laughs> I'm looking at him like, because I saw the album, like, yo, they look nice. How come they dress like black and yellow? It was like, Cause they were like the way they were dressing and like the whole thing, like really bland. I was like, and he played. I was like, and he was so into it. Like this kid is religious. So like shit. But I, I appreciate that he listened to that band because I didn't know about it. And yeah. I got the guitar. Was like, wow, this band, the guitar is amazing. And uh, he had his own guitar. I was like, yo, how old are you? That young guitar, I even. I'm like shit. <laughs> I, know, I know his parent got the guitar, like whatever. <laughs> But seeing him, seeing the other guy, and seeing my other friend that introduced me to like really hard bands like King Diamond, all this stuff, I was oh, like, yeah. wow. I was like, I had no, had no idea. I was like, it was just straight up like, like, I didn't know what the fuck to do. <laughs> like, you know, like I, and I never knew there were shows. Never, and uh, when I was in PR, like, they have like, what's a show? Like, no, you go to a Malinga show, whatever, they have the band playing live, whatever, like, Oh, oh shit! And then I, my friend got into me to all the hard band. Yo, kiss coming. Kiss. <laughs> I was like, yo, I gotta go. And I finally went to my first show, kiss. Wow. And I was like, wow. They came to PR. Yeah. The most 
odd, weird way I was dressed. Like a merengue kid in court. <laughs> Fucking metal shirt. I was like, look at everybody like, yo, I don't dress black. I don't like, I'm like, so odd. I was like, they were looking at me like, oh, you're probably the first time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was so bad. The show was great. I was like, wow. I can't remember what album was it that they were playing or from what album they came from that tour. But yeah, but I was, I guess, got full into it. How old were you at that point? I, you always, I was probably show? like, wow, maybe 13, 14 okay. or something okay, probably. Okay, I see. Very wow. Young. I was like, And it's, I guess after that, that's when like I would start collecting all this music, and I collect a lot of vinyls. It was all vinyls. All vinyls. I all see. All vinyls and eight track. But the eight track, I never got any medals. Eight track. It was just just Spanish music. But the sure. vinyls. Wow. Rare stuff. Really wow. Rare stuff. And I asked myself, how the so you first? Oh no! Go ahead. Go ahead. How the fuck did I got these albums? I don't know, because I know I was. Oh, I know why. I know, I, I know, I know why, I know why. Because I was a kid and like, uh, uh, I guess while going to school, I was delivering newspaper. So I had like a small job in the morning. So I get up in the morning before I go to school to deliver papers yeah. around six o'clock or five o'clock. And the, the good thing, it was, we have four buildings. So it was all in that area. So I didn't have to go. And then come for the next week, Get the payday, everything, and all that money went to buy. Went to buy. Went to buy. Wow. I really realized, yeah, how did I get this album? Yeah, do work and stuff with a kid. Yeah. And school. And uh, after that, I guess um, my mom decided to, like, hey, we're going back to New York. I was like, what? Like, are we taking all that stuff? I was like, I don't know. I guess we didn't talk. Like, all my stuff was left behind pretty much. Wow, all your all your vinyls. Yeah, all that stuff left behind. Wow. We we moved to grandma's house because we always see her. So we travel from San Juan to Mayagüez. Yeah. Every month, every day, and, and we moved there, and then from there we came back here. And uh, I guess when we were, when I got here, I was like, I have no idea. And I was like, Shit. how old were you at that point? I think I was probably in between fourteen, fifteen. Wow. Because I, I asked because we we left. New York, I was six, and we came back here around 85. Okay. 1985, I think it was. I think. So it was after the 80s, after like, through the 80s. Yeah, sure. Um, and, uh, moved to the Bronx. <laughs> Jesus Christ. That was something Bronx else. in the 80s. Oh, yeah, that was, that was, whole another dimension. Something else. I was like, what the hell are we doing? Which neighborhood did you move to? It was on Third Avenue, uh, somewhere Prospect or Jackson. Oh, okay, okay. Combined with Third Down Avenue. There. Yep. Um, it was horrible scene. It was like a lot of empty buildings, burnt uh -huh. buildings, everything else. Yeah. A lot of, a lot of like, uh, I guess it was weird because I always run into like uh, the half. Not uh, half. It was, I guess, like pills. A bunch of pills everywhere. Huh. And I know the the, co the color was yellow and green. Yellow and green. Everywhere. Everywhere you see on the floor, like, like damn, what the heck? And you could smell it. I don't know what the hell was it. Huh. But huh. the Bronx was not. Jesus. But it is what it is. I got to the Bronx. I had to step out and see what's going on there. Did Did you have family in the Bronx? Yeah. I have yeah. some family members. In the, but they weren't in um in Brooklyn, and they were from my mom's side, whatever. Then. But they were like close family members. Okay. So we used to travel to Bronx, to Brooklyn, Bronx to Brooklyn. To I see. Going, uh, all the way to Flashburg, where I was born. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, yeah. Lived yeah. they still area. lived in that area, yeah, right? So, wow. Um, but but no, I guess no family members in the Bronx other than your family. Is that right? Yeah. Pretty much. Do you and know then, Do you know why your parents chose the Bronx? I don't know. Yeah. Cause, no, because uh, my dad left first to come back to. I see. To to the. I thought he left. Yeah. I thought he left. And we were in PR like, okay, I got to take over. Yeah. I gotta, I, I'm, I'm the only, me and my brother, I was the only older one. So I'm looking for a job, doing the stuff, going to school, and everything else then. Oh, my mom. And uh, so I thought he left. He was like, I think, like, we're, we're 
we're all self-healing. And then Macho Mino, we're going back to who's your dad and we're going back to New York. I was happy. I was like, I was happy to see him, that for sure. Yeah. Like, Yo, what happened? He never explained what happened, but I was happy to see him. Yeah. And then, uh, I guess that's when I moved to the Bronx and that was it then. And I started to meet more people in the music I could actually finally hear on the radio station. <laughs> I was like, finally. This place ain't that bad. <laughs> yeah, I was like, and it's funny because it was Crucial Chaos. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Crucial Chaos. I yeah. was like, oh, yeah. to the tape, it's called Report. Yeah. Uh huh. To the tape, really? and I was like, but the funny thing about it, I never knew any hardcore bands. Yeah. Until Crucial Chaos. It was uh-huh. all metal bands. Mm-hmm. Do you remember the first hardcore band that you heard? Fucking sick of it all, baby. Sick of it all. Yeah, because they were like the only ones on MTV at uh-huh. that time too. Uh-huh. I was like, but there was all other bands. Because the show was, I think, it was the Thursday night, only once a week. Yeah, I think it was Thursday night. I think it only was. But sick of it all. Yeah, I mean, that was when I introduced to the hardcore scene. Yeah, my life. My life. Wow, that was dope. And uh, I guess that's, I guess yeah, that was introduced to the hardcore scene. But I was like, every week I was like, yo, okay. yeah. Once you get a taste, it's like, oh, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> let's go. <laughs> let's go. <laughs> Enough to crumb. <clears throat> Rest in peace. And it, it's funny because like my friend took me to Salty Four. They was like, what the fuck is wrong with you, Slayer? I was like, can you start it with something? Like, not too crazy, but fucking, let's start with this band. Yeah. Let's this shit. Like, <laughs> she could with okay, and I was like, oh, wow, man. This is you, yeah. Wow. That was all the bands. That was, because I, I, I was recording all the time. I didn't know where to get the bands. I didn't know where to get the albums. I had no idea where to go to any stores. I was in New York, in yeah. the Bronx. But then, then you find, oh, Tower Records. Uh-huh. HMV, Tower Records, yeah, those spots. Yeah, that's when like, I started, like, oh, so I get the stuff from here then. Uh, and then in that area, then I found out all the stores, like Second Coming Records, Generation Records. Generation Records, yeah. Records, yeah. I think they're, they're still around, too. Yeah, yeah. Kind of, yeah Generation's still around, I think, mm-hmm. but the other ones are gone. And there was that one on 6th, right? Uh, uh, there was a few more. There was some sound from an Astor President to right. us, uh-huh. up the stairs. Mm-hmm. Uh, there were all the stores. Bleaker Bob's. Bob's, yeah. You can both the area. That was it. You go there. You, you, you find everything. Everything. Yeah. How about you remember Rocket Rags? Yeah. That was, yeah. Wow. I have to like redo my, <laughs> restart my vinyl again. Like, yo, I have to like my grandma. He actually sold it. He gave it away. Oh, no, he, no, she did it. She gave it away. That was, oh, no. <laughs> and there was some. You had some rare stuff there. Rare stuff. I was like, and I asked myself, how did I got that? Like, wow. Wow. Pretty much, yeah. That was probably like a lot of our pastime too. It's just like going to Jose's house and he would like cook for us and just throw music on for us. Uh huh. Our little DJ over here, our little DJ cook, <laughs> taking care of us. Oh, it, you guys can, like my mom, welcome you guys. Yeah. We're kind of part of the family. And like, I have to learn from her. Hey, I need to learn how to cook anything else and how to cook for friends and family. Like, that's how you guys came to my house. I was like, look, you cooking? Yes, it's cooking. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't use it? Let's do this. I was like, yeah, let's do this. That shit. Wow. Um, when you when you came to the Bronx, what high school did you end up no going to? No high school. Old, old, old school was in, you, in PR. I because, see, I see. So I, you finished I, it already. Yeah, was, no, I didn't finish quite because I was in the middle of like, high school. I was like, yeah, my mom, let's do it. Like, so I couldn't speak. I was like, shit. Yeah. So I went to, uh, I guess... Some institution or whatever, uh, what kind of vocational school was it? Yeah, but it was like a some middle school, or whatever. That I have to pay that loan. Yeah, yeah. I hate that. <laughs> yeah. So I had to learn my English, and I was uh, doing English and computer. I had no idea. Yo, I came in speak English. How the fuck are you gonna tell me to do this? But yeah, that's how I started learning English again. Trying to get it back, and like took me a while. And um. Yeah, but or any high school that was back in here, nothing I see, here. I see, I see, I see. It was just technical school that I would go here, then, and I was there. Then uh, after that, I just decided, you know what? Because I, I wanted, I was thinking, not thinking, my plan was to go to college in PR. 
Okay, sure, sure. But it didn't happen. We just abruptly got to move back. I was like, and I, once I got what I did was, you know what? I was going to get my GED. I got my GED. You know, got the class, and I realized too. I went to Fordham. I wasn't sure the Fordham University if I was going to go or not. I said, you know what? I'm just going to get a job because it was hard times in that time. Sure. We moved back to like, I don't know if they would have been doing this shit. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, but like I said, all the school wasn't here, but nothing here. We used to go to school. That was like, I see, I see. Um, what are some of the ways that you would meet, like, some of your. Um, first friends like in the Bronx was it through music I think it was it was music but I think it was just shows because I used okay. to go to like I don't know how oh yeah because Kusha Cat will now show hey we go with this show these bands are playing The Risk Wetlands uh-huh. uh, CBGB's yeah, I was scared to go there You're I don't scared know where CBGB's. I don't know why because it was like <laughs> it was the most beat the hardcore bands I was like oh whoa because I always hear stories from CBGBs and I see the picture, like the, the pictures and everything, like beautiful shots, everything, like it was so intense. The shot was like, oh my God. And I see the band's playing, like, God damn, I need to go there. Yeah. But it was, I guess, it was the big venue that I was going to see. Um, first time, so ST, Suicidal Tendencies, um, uh, Gorilla Vista, another uh-huh. band that I saw at the rest. Yeah. Wow. One band that I think it blew up. I don't know how it happened, but I guess I already met the guys and everything. It was Life for Agony. Oh, oh yeah. Okay, okay, okay. yeah. I was, I got That's the who first played demo. the freaking Marauder, my first show. Wow. Yeah. Uh, I got the Agony. demo, I got everything, and this guy was singing all like, yo, the band, everything. I was like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know if they played with, uh, that day with Typo, typo Negative. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah. I, I couldn't get to see them in Carnival. Carnival was, oh, yeah. Carnival was bomb, man. I used to uh, love man. that band. It was too late for me. I think the, the, mm, they, they had already transitioned yeah. then. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, yeah, I think it was just the big venue that I used to go. And uh, nothing small. Not, not like Black Thorn or anything. I think that, was, that came later. Really? But bands like that. There is. At the, uh, what else? Um, that's the name, uh, the whole, uh, Lamors. Lamors. Wow, that was, Lamors. that was far. Yeah, that's a long ride. That was like, every time, because I was from the Bronx, and we were from the Bronx, and every time they say Lamor, it's the Warriors, you know, you're going to go down there, like, yeah. <laughs> territory. <laughs> uh, like, like anything, <laughs> anything happens, any beef, you know, it's a little trip, but I was like, yeah, we know. Like, well, well, we, we got a big crew, and we did. Yeah. We went there, like, I think the first show there was DSI. I was like, oh, holy shit, shit dude, what the... Wow. That was amazing. I it, bet. It was, it was amazing. We even got to fight with the bouncers. <laughs> <laughs> and then the one. We, and then we became friends with the bouncers. Like, <laughs> like, we were cool. Like, yeah. Because like, we were up the grid. Yeah. yeah from the Bronx, from there, yeah, we were up the grid. But places like Lamore, Wetlands, um, they feel lounge. That was in Manhattan, actually. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, 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 yeah. That was one of the spots that at that time did a lot of shows. Yeah. But then any of the small bands, that was something that I think, I don't know how that I met her, but I guess she came to when Burn Down was around. It was one of the Burn Down Uh shows, I think. uh, I see. I don't even know how we end up playing shows when I have Burn Down in this small, but I guess we put the band together. I remember how I met the wrong either, so I know it was way back. And I know what good it meant to have to be good at meant because I was the only band. I was like, yo. So we know, I thought we were the only band. Yeah. In the Bronx. I'm like, oh, we got good at And you know, like, DBH, like, what? They're like, that when I met Manny. I'm like, Rockstar Manny. <laughs> <laughs> and I think, I think it started from there that I go to Mentis, everything else, uh, I Ray, everything like, from there I started meeting everybody else. Then. I see. Do you remember when you were going to these shows and you were going down, you know, with other Bronx people on the on the subway? Um, who were some of the people that you had met from the Bronx around that time that were going down to shows with you? Um, old friends of mine that we just met is we met at shows, and then I guess I realized, oh, I live in the Bronx. Oh, you too. So I realized, oh, you're not that far. You live here, then, and um. Uh, 
something like a few friends like Scam, Carlos, Mostro, all the uh, ballads. Big Anthony. Yeah. Big Anthony. Oh, okay. Big Anthony. Yeah. He was, he was the death metal satanic guy. He, like, yeah. he plays some carnival chords. I'm like, yo, what the? He got me into that. I was like, yo, thank you, man. Like, <laughs> shit, I was like, I can love him too. oh my God. And uh, but then I realized we were so like, we're not that far apart. I was like, yo, we're like nearby and shit. Yeah. Um, and we realized, and, uh, and now for the shows, and we were, then, then we go deep. <laughs> like, and we started like uh, to start my friends that some of them passed away, some of them still around. Yeah. Um, and we went to some shows, wow. especially uh, I think one show that we were trying to tell it wasn't. It was Guar. Guar, ah, okay. But we we didn't even, we went to I don't know where, how far we went. We just went to see them. <laughs> And, uh, I would always purposely wear white when I would go see them. <laughs> yeah, uh, big mistake. <laughs> we uh, we wore the white shirts and like never seen that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> ne- never seen anything like it. It was amazing, it was especially the part with the with the Pope getting crucified with a cross on his ass. <laughs> I was like, holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> and all this blood, everything else, and oh, that's so great. But I think the best part was after the show. It was fun, everything. It was us people on on my friend Carl Nelson, all blooding everything <laughs> on the highway, and people looking all like, what the? <laughs> we were like, oh, cover like, and stuff, or like, holy shit! They, they were scared. They were like, <laughs> but I was, yeah. Wow. That was, uh, never forget that. Wow. Do you remember, um, what's the first show you went to in the Bronx? In the Bronx. For some reason, I can't think, I don't know which show was it, or which band was it, but I'm thinking either it was Castle Heights or it was Blackthorn. Blackthorn? Because oh, Castle, Castle Heights was in Queens. Yeah, it was in Queens. I didn't know that much about Queens, but I know it's like, stay away from Queens. <laughs> Because like, okay, there, there was some like always some weird thing about the bands and the crews and everything. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. But we had our own problem in the Bronx. We had gang members. We got this. We got this crew. Like you cannot walk this area knowing them. Yeah. You cannot walk this unless you know those guys. If you're not there, do you start running? That's yeah. what I'm saying. Uh, but I think it was platform because I remember the I don't know what band was it. I don't know it was for some reason I always. Thinking Kangaria, but I'm not sure if it was them. They played a lot at the platform, yeah. Yeah, so that's why that was yeah. something that yeah. always play. Yeah, yeah Kangaria, Hapri. Yeah, that, that was some of the. Uh, but I guess it was probably them because it was like oh, it was Kangaria always, like it was always popping in Black Thorn. I was like, oh wow, huh? Hapri. I don't know if District Nine got to if I, if I got to meet them there. I know they played at the train depot. I don't know if you ever went to that train depot. I can't remember place that. ever, but I know that was to me. To me, that was the only place that we knew that was a show. Yeah, yeah like even the Bronx. Well, I miss it like easy to go there. Like, yeah, like, I probably met a few people. And I probably probably met Will and some of the guys. That's why I think I I got to see TVH. Not see them by like where they live or hanging out. And yeah, just other people. Right, right. You know. It's hard to you have to be from there because they were all from the Bronx. I was like, oh, it's mm-hmm. hard to be this place because it wasn't in Castle Heights. Right? Yeah, sure. But I think it was had to be Kandiria probably. I don't know who else because it was far back. Though. Yeah, sure, sure. Um, now, how did you uh, take up guitar? I mean, you're clearly very interested in guitar from a very early age, but how did you pick it up and start playing? <sighs> I never got to... Well, back in PR, a friend of mine that introduced me to all these hard death metal bands, he had a guitar. His brother had a guitar. So he will let me try it. I couldn't figure out how to, what the hell, what am I doing? Like, drop the E, whatever, I have no idea. But it used to feel the have it in my hand. and like, I gotta figure this out. And that was the first time I had it in my hand. After I never, never again until we came back to New York. Okay. To the Bronx. 
I don't know, I guess a friend of mine that when I met Alex, he already had a guitar and bass. And uh, I guess I'll use his guitar or he'll bring it to Demo or something. Yeah. And then we have Carlos. Mm. Carlos has his own bass and guitar, so we bring it to the house and we jam out. I guess it was a Fender or another guitar was, I think it was the Aria Pro that time, way back. Uh, they're pretty guitars. I don't think they don't make it anymore. Huh. Uh, I think that was my first guitar. I don't know how that I got it. I have no idea. Yeah. I, just, I just know I have it. If I'm going to something, hey, trade my cable or something. Or whatever. <laughs> but I need this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, I, try to, I know it's like I had it and I use it. I don't think if I ever got to play on a show. Yeah. Uh, I probably had it for rehearsal studios. Sure. And uh, after that, I just got so into, for some reason, because you, the guitars are playing in different bands, and you can see this guitar, a Fender or whatever, always metal. And you have Les Paul Gibson, always hardcore. Yeah. And you just got... The more I got into hardcore, the more I want to get the Gibson. The more I saw, well, here you go today. I just want it. And I saw the, not so, but the pictures and the music was so like, and see them jumping around, everything. I was like, wow, that energy. And I guess from there, after like, I saved my money, I guess we're doing a part time job and I got my first Gibson guitar. Wow. That's cool, I think it was. And I started reading, all right, what am I playing? Because I guess I learned how to play E, but it was, I was interested in that. And I started drop D, drop D. But you played E, right? Uh, well, I started playing E, and I went to D, because death, that's what wrote death metal does. Death metal music. Uh-huh. <laughs> and I realized it wasn't helping. I was like, and I was kind of confused because I, I want to play hardcore. <laughs> this is not gonna work. And it's like I have to play E if I wanna. But then I started drop, drop, drop to trying to understand. I, I never got to learn how to read music at all. Sure. So I just go by sound, and I you know learn trying to learn the sound, pick up the sound. Where the note is, how he the string is, and what area. And it was just dropped deep from there on. And, and it was just, I was trying to mix hardcore and death metal, but it was weird. <laughs> we just didn't quite get there, but then we hear breakdowns. <laughs> and uh-huh. then breakdowns dropped the perfect. Yep. And that was it then. I'll leave the E when it goes speedy, stuck, whatever the shit. <laughs> 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 um, and it took, me a, it, it took me a while, and people would ask me, like, Yo, how, do you, how do you play guitar? I was like, I just go by ear and play drop D. I'm like, oh shit. Wow. And then I started jumping around with the music, trying to time it when I jump and not to fuck up when I land on my feet. I was like, cause it was, it was hard, but it was fun. Wow. Um, so who all were you playing with it at this time? You mentioned Alex. Um, yeah. So when Burn Down, before Burn Down, I had my friend Scamp David. Scamp, okay. Yeah, and yeah. He, 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 he was... We were, we were going to, to Nippon Def, so I was like, all right, dude. They all want Nippon Def. I was like, whoa, this is... <laughs> and, I, and, and when I come to drums, that's one thing that she started, like, started blowing that shit, dude. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, they all want to grindcore. I was like, so wow. That that was wow. The, I think that was the first time that I started hearing grindcore music, and it was Carcass and Nippon Def and, and some of the bands. Yeah. And I was like, and I guess somebody... I don't know who bought the tape. It was a VHS tape from Nippon Def uh, about the band, the members, everything else. We watch it every time, every day, every day. <laughs> we learn what they, what they were saying. Everything they were saying, we learn and we mimic it, everything. And then um, I think he came with the idea, let's, let's do a band. Well, I, I don't know who did. But before Burn, that was called Prognosis. Prognosis? Yeah. Ah. It is, um, and it was, for some reason for them, because it wasn't my idea. It was then that they say, oh, it sounds like a death metal thing. But we never got to play. I see. But for some reason, Scan will come. Yo, they 
way in the active prognosis. We don't even have a son yet, dude. What's wrong with you? <laughs> like, it's like you know, loyal yeah. supporter. Right? Like, no, you know, ask him, like, yo, we didn't even play yet. <laughs> like, after that, so loyal. Uh, Burnham was born. I came with the name, and I decided to get the members. So I don't think Scan was not there, but I guess I decided to pick the guys and. Uh, and we have, I have a few friends that we work together, and like we found out, oh, you play drum, you play guitar. And, and uh, Axel, that passed away, he was a singer. Yeah. Axel? Yeah, he was a singer, a good guy, fucking like a brother. Um, he was the first burn down singer. He passed away. And I guess we, after that, we realized there were only two kids, younger kids, lived not far from us, maybe two blocks away. They were not allowed to hang out with us because they were two little kids. <laughs> that was Lewis and somebody else, I forgot his name. And Lewis became the new singer. Okay. From Burnout. And who else was in that original lineup? Uh, Alex, he was the bass player. Uh huh. And we got Angel, aka Brody, he was a drummer. But I guess, I don't know what happened with him. I guess he didn't move out from then. And I uh, uh, have somebody named Steven. Well, Steve, Steve, yeah, Steve. He lived in the city, he was a drummer, he came in, and it was me, Alex, Steve, and Lewis. That was burned up. Mm -hmm. I see. That was it right there then. Uh, How'd you come up with the name? You mentioned you came up with the name? I came with the name, and I was, I just wanted to be like a hardcore band. Uh, it had to be, with the name, had to come close to something that sounds hardcore. Yeah. But, I wasn't sure, I just came with the name, and I was hoping nobody had it. Right? Yeah. I hope nobody had this name. I was like, Little do I know that after that, oh, it's back hole, shut down, dig down, down, down. Like, yo, please don't tell me it's a back hole. Brand down, <laughs> someplace else and shit. Um, yeah, and um, everybody liked it. And I'm like, yo, it's a good name. So let's start, let's start doing shit then. And uh, everybody agree. Let's do it with the name. They like it. And it's funny because the way prognosis was, it was all like grindcore. This is, the, this is what the idea that was, you know, it just went from there to just hardcore. Wow. Once the name changed, like, it, was, it was not the same people anymore. Yeah. The, the crowd that I have now, the people that I have there was into our music. I see, I see. I, 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 might, I might be wrong, but I haven't heard anyone else mention a Bronx band that played grindcore, so Prognosis might be uh, yeah. one of the only ones. <laughs> prognosis. I mean, I, I, I have stuff for them, but it never happened. It never, yeah, it never sure. came out. So, I just... Sorry. So... Um, Burn down. We like. I, I I didn't know how to write lyrics. I had no idea about lyrics, and I guess Axel came with the lyrics. But after that, we you know, we, we did. I think we did. We never got to play, in a place anything. We just rehearsing or playing in, in my house. Yeah. And I could we had the instruments and everything else. And once uh, he passed away. I guess that's when Lewis came along during the band. And he has interesting background when it comes to music, but he was a black flag. He was black flag. Oh, and okay. Henry Rollins lover, he was bad. Sure. Guy. He he had everything. And he loved bad brains. Bad brains <laughs> that's the first, for him, that's the first time he had bad brains. Yeah. And I was like, Wow. Yeah. Bad brains. I think you put me up to bad brains. Yeah, because no, I didn't no, know, no, I know stuff, I yeah. about bad brains. I was like, yo. This is amazing. Uh-huh. Uh, find out what you're making, guys. I was like, what? <laughs> no, what's going on? I was like, the, the, um, the guitar, I forgot the guitarist's name. Uh, from Bad Brains. Uh, we'll see if we get out later. He was amazing. I was like, wow. Yeah. It's like you hear, but you don't, you don't know that thing. Until you see the picture, like, oh, shit, that's Bad Brains? Uh -huh. Wow. Music was great. And I guess having that background for his music, that's when, all right, this is going to be definitely going to be a hardcore band now. Yeah. And, uh, and I have my influence with all the hardcore bands. The, I wasn't ready, but I was never playing hardcore music, but I wanted to play hardcore music. So it just, we got together, we jam out, we jam out until something comes along. And I think the first song was Burned Out. That's it. Oh, okay. And, uh, I think the biggest reason too because I have 
another influence band. It was Inside Out. Oh, Inside Out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big. Yeah. I think Big was the guitarist. He had this, uh, his guitar style. Boy, it just, it was amazing. It was, wow, man. And it was because of the intro, too. Some of the intro songs they had, they were like, wow, man. And that's what burned now. The song just came out and it felt like, wow, this is it. And we never turned back. That was it. Wow. Yeah, so. Wow. <coughs> so did um, you, I think, I think you, you just mentioned it. Burn Down didn't play, um, did Burn Down play shows? It's, it's funny because I don't remember if we started playing shows. I, I remember it far back that I was same time I was booking shows. Okay. I don't know how they end up booking shows. Okay. On, on Spiral. With Club Spiral. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and Black Thorn, maybe. And uh, that's when I got to get burned out to play in this middle. Ah, I see. And I, and I asked all the bands from the Bronx, hey, anybody that a demo the same to me. Yeah. I'll, I'll book into the show, whatever. I called the owner. He would tell me, "Oh, the price is this. Make sure that they could drink." I was like, "Oh God, a little, <laughs> bunch of little kids here." <laughs> like, uh, but I'll do the best that I can. I was like, uh, I, "I think I book a few shows because I was, I was only calling to book shows on Spiral, and I did that." I remember any booking any of the shows in other places. Maybe ABC or Rio, maybe. Okay. And there was another place that we played to. Yeah. But I think it was Spiral, ABC in Rio. The pyramid, maybe? Hmm, maybe, the maybe, pyramid. maybe. That's a little foggy. I can't remember the pyramid. But I know there were shows there. Yeah, we yeah. played there a few yeah. times. Yeah. <clears throat> and um, after those shows, then I guess that's when we met Guadalmantes, I read everything, everybody else, and then we ended up playing Castle Heights and Black Thorn and everything else. But I, okay. think, I think we started with maybe, it was Spiral, maybe. I see. And, uh, Around there, probably. I see. And so, year-wise, we're talking what, like ninety-six, ninety-seven? Yeah, somewhere it's like, it's around there. Around there, maybe. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and did Burn Down record anything? Um, yeah, we recorded. It wasn't Burn Down. Um, it was after that they switched the name to Star. Yeah. We recorded for. I forgot the, the the label. Independent something. It's a compilation. It's or? a compilation. Yeah, it was yeah. a compilation. We did three songs. Um, it wasn't the new Found Hope one, right? It probably was. Yeah, I think yeah. Was it the new Found Hope? Yeah, I think yeah, new Found Hope. Um, that was start, but it wasn't burned out. I see. Yeah. But you you guys didn't have a recording. I don't know why I feel like I have like a. I had I, you I guys think, recorded somewhere at some we, point. We had something, but I came from where I was. I just cannot <clears throat> right. remember. Uh, but, I see, I see. Um, so there, there's a burned down recording out there. Yeah. Somewhere, um, yeah. And I know... I remember the stickers that you used to always draw and all that. Yeah, I had the stickers and everything else. And, and, um, and the covers that you used to I make. Know. For and then it. we got to play CBGs. Oh, wow, okay. That was something that I wouldn't expect. Wow. Who would you play CBGs with? Do you um, remember? Wow, I had to look. I had to fly, but I can't remember which band was it. Oh, that's fine. We'll talk about your own experience at yeah, CBGBs. That's the most uh, important that thing. That was anyway. first thing I do when I get to CBGBs. Man, I was like, start tagging. What'd you tag? No, I had a stencil of burn down. Uh, oh, so I already had it ready to. Like, oh my god, nice. So I had it ready to like. Nice. And I see, I, we got there. We dropped, dropped the band. We put the stuff out, and I see the line. Looking at me like, what's wrong with that kid? I like, <laughs> uh, the light pole, like, what's wrong with that? Oh, it burned now. Oh, shit. All right. Um, great show. It was our first. I never, ever, ever thought of playing CBGBs. That's amazing. That was when CBGBs was almost allowed to be out, probably. No, they still yeah. had a few years. years. Yeah. Yeah, they still had a lot of years after that. Um, that was amazing. I don't even know how we got that show. I think it was somebody else that, like, just from somebody else that, hey, you guys can play. I don't know, it was Ruth's friend or somebody that, some, somebody just come and play it. Wow. Um, 
I don't know who the first or second band, whatever. Hey, Holy Mother just got to play some of these. Mm. Wow. That was an amazing show. That was the energy, everything. I even look at the crowd. I was just jumping around, playing guitar, make sure I don't fuck up. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing else. Wow. Um, what are some other of the memorable, most memorable shows that burned down for you? Probably... Probably ABC No Real was something. Yeah. That was like wild. ABC No Real was like, the crowd was just. So dedicated. Yeah. It was, yeah. That was more like, no rules, just have fun. That's the other thing. <laughs> and it was a different crowd than I've ever seen before. It was more like punk, sporters, everything. It was uh, all mixed. I, I was see. like, wow. And that we got to know more people. People got to know more burnout than that. That's the thing I made like in a vacancy, probably. Mm. In that show, ABC, or maybe not, but I know that was ABC, CBGBs. I don't know if we got to play any other like big, uh, Continental, probably, yeah. Oh, big Continental, Continental okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, um, yeah, I think that was, and then everything was Castle Heights, it was Blackthorn, sure, sure, and, um, people's house or something. Oh, yeah, I was gonna um, ask if you did house parties with Burnt Down, too. Yeah, I, I don't think we ever did. Can we, I don't remember that anybody. Was it burned down? I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure yeah. we. Because we, it was it was hard to ask the guys, hey, can we do a show? Because it, <laughs> it was always busy. Yeah, sure. Or they didn't want it. They just didn't. Like, I don't know. But I always go to everybody's house to party and everything else. Oh, when are you guys going to play? When are you guys, I don't know. Asking the guys. But I don't remember playing us in anybody's house that I know of. I see. I, I see. That I know. I don't remember that. Um, Maybe having, but I just can't. Sure. How would you um, describe like the sound of burn down? Man, that was that was something else. It was because I didn't want to be like any other band. Yeah, I was trying to keep it simple, like our own style and everything. And it was it was I don't, I don't know how to describe it. I didn't realize that once we recorded some of the songs and I started playing it. And I started listening to Lewis singing. It was I see the the influence, and it was more Chromax uh -huh. because of him. Ah, uh -huh. the influence of that point because of him. Yeah. And I had somebody else that said, "Hey, you guys, some um, had the sound of leeway and killing time." Okay. Mm. And I realized, oh shit. Like, it's, it, I wasn't sure, but they told me, yeah, it's like, yeah, Killing Time, Leeway. He starts to get more like Chromax. I was like, oh wow. So it was, I was kind of like embarrassed. Like, I don't want to copy the sound. Like, I don't want to sure. be like, and yeah, some riffs sound like, oh shit. <laughs> you know, like, Fuck. I was like, okay, we, we do sound like some of those bands. We got no choice. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. We could only make that so many chords. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Um, and why did um, Burn Down change its name, and did the sound change with that at all? I I don't know. Is uh, for as far as I know, if I remember well, I think it was Lewis that came and said, "Hey, you changed our name." And I, I, for some reason, I just, I don't know what, I guess I was against it, but it, I wasn't. And I got convinced, and I convinced myself to switch to start. And I was like, it was, I don't know, it was. But at the same time, I was doing the artwork for every band, for P.O.P., Burn Down, and Start. I so see. I couldn't, I could not. Star was like just I couldn't figure out what to draw it. How am I gonna like what what is it that to like, inspire me to just do it? And that made it more hard. And it was just like with burnout I knew because I already did burn down. POP I'm yo, can you do the POP? We do the POP I was like, oh shit. It just came out. It just yeah. came out. I was <laughs> like, oh that's the graffiti shit was really cool and everything, but with Star was really like, like yeah. It's hard to explain. I don't know why. It was sure. something that I don't know. It's from that moment on was like, like it just I felt like, like 
it wasn't burned out slowly, uh-huh. like it was fading away a little bit. And the music in the guitar, in the our style was switching a different little bit by little. I was like, like it wasn't like hardcore, hardcore. What were you starting to sound like? I don't know, but it was. I can't remember. What, I know I have an idea, but I can't remember what was it. But I just it, it wasn't a sound that I was in front of it. I was like, and I was trying really hard. I was yeah. trying to like, and I wasn't really inspired. Like, I don't know why. And I felt bad because I was like, I should. I, I don't like to give up on things. Like, let me just try. I, I got to keep trying. Yeah. I love music. Let's do it. But I guess I get to see what planted in that moment. And it was like I just couldn't figure out why. Yeah, I regret it. Sure. When I left the band, I was like, "Shit!" But I felt like it was unfinished business. Yeah. I I even have a few songs that never came out for Burn Down that I had recorded. Wow. I, I used to record drum machine, yeah. guitar, and bass, and I had a few people coming in to, to do the song. Like, what the fuck? It's for Burn Down. After that, forgot it. Wow. Well, after you left Starve, um, did the band like stay around very much longer after that? I don't know. Yeah. And, and um, I guess it, it was, I don't know, it was hard for them, but I felt like I betrayed them because I did betray them. I was like, and I, and I felt like really bad. I was like, because I really haven't finished business. I was like, damn. Yeah, but if you're not feeling it, that's not betrayal. Hopefully. Yeah. That's so right. I, but, but it felt like, like <clears> it was like, I didn't hear from them that much. I was like, shit. And I thought because I put, I, I put these people together and I want to do this this band. I was like, I want to have fun. We met people. We got to play with this band. All the band, all this stuff. And, everything. I was like, and it was amazing. I was like, at the same time, I was playing with two approaches. Yeah. Oh, so there's overlap. With yeah, the, it the was. Two. Ah, overlap. okay, okay. And there was a little bit of like, you know, was it playing POP, you know? Yeah. They didn't like that. I see. I don't say it was jealousy, but it was friction like, yo. I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Uh, and I was hard because I was booking shows at the same time. I was playing one show with POP or I had to go burn the fitness club the same day probably. Wow. I was like, it was a lot. It was a lot. Wow. And it was, I don't know. But that one starts when just start came out. And I was, I still ask myself like, damn, I should have just tried to fight for it. And it was something that stayed in my mind because like, damn, man. Yeah. I, it, like, the problem with, you have a problem, you work so hard on it, and you haven't mastered it yet. And I feel like I didn't master it yet with Burn Down. I didn't, ma- I didn't get to the point that I feel like, all right, you can never master it, but you can always improve, get better. And that's why I wanted to Burn Down. Yeah. Same thing with Pool Purchase because it was a different style of music. But with Burn, I felt like it was just left on the table. And I never got to that point that I want to get there. Like, can I get there and get more and do more? Yeah. So once the name got switched, it was like, it just, I guess that was it. it yeah, was like, yeah, 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 yeah. That was it. Wow. Um, wow. So before we get into Proof of Purchase, I just want to ask both of you, a uh, question about a uh, pivotal, mo- pivotal moment in, in the Bronx scene history that I think you all mentioned earlier. Um, were either of you or both of you at the Malali Park? Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Talk about that some, and then we'll get into proof of purchase. Ooh, <laughs> oh, was, uh, sick of it Oh, sick of it all. Oh, it all. Nine. oh my God. Yep, yeah. yep, 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 yep. Well, that was, I think that was the first time we thought, like, sick of it on the Bronx is all now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, was, I think Fahrenheit was, 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 was at that show too. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah, there were. Yeah, uh, I think there were other bands. Maybe, yeah, there were other bands. I forget who all it was, but Oof. but yeah, I know. I think. No. Actually, District Nine, not they might not have been that year. I forget. They were there. They were there. Okay, so they were there. There was one year where they weren't allowed to play anymore for stupid reasons. But yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's, it's 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 kind of fucked up because. A lot of people, like the Sick of Little Show was fun, but it was like, 
Like, people like have to not be stupid. Like, like dude, well, have, I mean, have, have fun, dude. Like, Lin, fun? Lin, Lin, oh. talked about that. So. Yeah, that's, okay. that's her own. Yeah, you know, we're all teenagers. Yeah, we're all like developing and understanding ourselves. And, and they're like, was it Mountain all of this Dew aggressive was music sponsor you know? or something? Hmm. I think, and Lenny was like, people just started throwing the Mountain Dew bottles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I was you can't like... take people anywhere. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, that was fun though, because it's like, all right, you you know, you're in the Bronx and you're in this park, and all of a sudden you see skaters and you see like a, you know hardcore music, and it was like, oh my god, what's going yeah, on that, that, here? That was like the one place that was amazing. Like, yo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause, it felt complete. Because at that time, were you skating all the time too? No. Because I was skating. You were skating. Time. You I were skating. skating. Yeah, yeah. Before burnout and like, between everything, I was like. And then I went to one of the parks until I found out they were there. I was like, oh, shit. I'm not skating on the streets. I want to go there and shit. Yeah. And I said, like, you rap. Oh, my God. I'm, like, I'm going to kill myself if I do this shit. I got scared about it. I tried it, but it was like in the road. I'm going to stay down here and shit. But, uh, but that place, man, that was something. Else. Skaters, metalheads, or everything was there. Was yeah, like, yeah. Yo. Wow. That was epic. Yeah. That was an epic show. Next to Jackie Stadium to make it better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's yeah. right. That's right. Yeah, yeah. I was like, I can't find anything better than that. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Um, that was good. So let's hear the story of uh, Proof of Purchase. How did Proof of Purchase first come about? <laughs> I don't need, you need to ask. <laughs> I still don't know how. I know if I got introduced. I don't know how. We, we, we met somewhere. We met, we, we met <laughs> and then we found out that we were neighbors. Yeah. Uh-huh. And I would go to your house and I would be like, let's start a band. And you're like, no, I'm in burn down. I said, let's start a band. No. Maybe like a year later. No. <laughs> no but it was, it was quite some time later. <laughs> yeah. Where it was kind of like, yeah, that thing that when we just started clicking. It just clicked when we actually started. Like, because Steve would leave his drums at the house and uh-huh. I would come over. And, like, it was more to play the drums than even play with Jose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I was like, an actual snare? Yeah. What? You know? Like, <laughs> I'm sure you shouldn't even break anything. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that was the thing. But then he would, we would just rock and he would start playing and I would just follow him I remember sometimes you would even send or, or put some stuff on and you'd be like well, with the drum machine already programmed wow. and I'll just I listen already, to it because I, I didn't I, 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 you know I didn't I didn't formally learn how to play drums yeah, you sure, know sure. so like I really learned playing with like Jose and playing like with the bands that I've been playing with and yeah. even still now like I'm still in a learning process even though I've been like a teacher as well for the next amount of time it's still you know it's still as I go I yeah. still keep learning as I go but like yeah it was just like Okay, you know, freaking Jose's on the block. He plays in a band. I want to play in a band. So, you know, it was just like, that was like the the closest networking thing that I had to, uh-huh. me, you know. And so I would go to his house. He would make some food. He'd, we'd play music. We'd listen to music. We'd like play freaking Neo Geo all day, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Samurai, showdown, Samurai Showdown, guys. Samurai Showdown. Samurai Showdown. Samurai Showdown. To this day, I should have got probably fighters, the only game but... that I would uh, drop everything to play again, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and then his shit talking makes it even better. <laughs> you ever sit down and play video games with Jose? He's a big shit talker. Yeah, oh my God, that's like the best. Like even, you don't care if you lose. It's like, as long as he's talking shit. <laughs> if you make it more interesting, you're like... <laughs> Yeah. So we just it started, fun. yeah, we just I would just always come over sometimes when he would have free time and stuff, and, and we would just play and jam, and and then we were started working on things, like things started kind of like forming, yeah. and then that's when I was like, okay, let's, should ask my sister to sing, you know, and then we asked Mari to sing, and then, and then what was going on, we had uh, Roach, yeah. remember Roach, Roach? Yeah. On, on bass first, for yeah. a while. We got a picture of that at home too. Right? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. There was a friend. Well, he was the one I first started that first. Uh, oh, crazy! The, the uh, black metal. Yeah, that black metal band, wow. Obscurity. Full yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he played with us for a while. <clears throat> then I don't know what happened with that. Something going on there. Yeah, there's always some kind of weirdness happening. And then Jackie came on board for a while, and uh, and she was with us for quite some time. Actually, that was she that was really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, she, yeah, because I mean, she wasn't like a, the, 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 she liked to play bass. Yeah, she it's not like she was a bass player, but she liked to play bass and 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 
and the opportunity was there to, to grow with us, yeah, you know, because yeah, yeah. I was also learning how to play drums. Jose was probably the most experienced at that time. Sure. With, uh, with, the, with this style of music, at least, you know. Yeah. Um, and my sister, well, of course, my sister, you know, she's already in her career as, uh, as a music teacher and stuff. So that was always, you know, that was always her forefront. But with Jose, it was, I don't know, we just clicked. We just clicked, you know. Wow. And like you said earlier, it's just like when, 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 when you click with someone like that, you just, you, you just go. Yeah, you know, don't even sure. think twice about it. Wow. Um, and what was uh, what was the like sound of um, proof of purchase? Uh, at least at the beginning. I mean, I know you might have evolved in the sound, but what were you all going for at the time? Jose, Jose, his sound was his sound. Okay, you okay. Know, like yeah, nobody yeah, played. I, I guess, like no, it, it, you know, you get a little bit of influences from other things here and there, yeah, but sure. yeah, like you know, so. So we did sound a little bit like burned down in the beginning. I see. I you see. know, that because of his that. chord structures and sure. stuff like that. And but um but we but yeah, but we, we all bought in our own element into the situation. So it did create this whole different thing. Yeah. You know, and it wasn't like any kind of ripping off happening there. Sure. You know. And I don't think that would have even interfered if we would have both kept playing in like however many bands we were playing in or doing what we were doing and stuff. Yeah. Because, I don't know, I've always learned how to be pretty organized with that kind of stuff. To not, like, you know, step on myself. Yeah. <laughs> or, or, or people step on themselves around me. Like, that's, that, that, that was never my, my flow. Sure. Yeah, and I guess, I guess, you know, before too long, there were more women than men in the band with, with three three out of the right members. right 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 it was yeah me jackie and my sister were there and we were gonna be a full girl band right because we wanted to have oasa play guitar for yeah. us and uh, i remember she would come over to the practices with olivia sometimes at yeah. your house but she never took it seriously yeah. and then you know and and i don't I, I i think the only people that really took it seriously was me and jose and then my sister saw that and I she see. jumped in you know and and it then was, it was interesting because you would be the only female band at that time. Band. Yeah, yeah, I was, yeah. Yeah, I was gonna yeah, ask. That's, oh. that's kind of what I was going for. Yeah, you know, were were there any even any other bands that had you know more than one or two? It, at females? that time, yeah. there was that one band that Rachel was in. Yeah. Um, I can't I remember who, that that girl. I think Melissa was her name on drums. Probably. Remember? Yes. Um, I don't remember the name of the band. I won't. Uh, I can't remember either. Wow, I used to love supporting them too because, but they were from the city in Brooklyn yeah. and stuff. And, yeah, sure. And like, and and they actually had gotten like the all girl thing happening, and I was just like, yeah, you yeah, know, get yeah, it going, yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I had my time with another dying democracy, and we were of also course. an all, an all girl right. metal band for 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 quite some time. That's right. But uh, but yeah, like. P.O.P. was supposed to be like the first girl Real hardcore band. band from the Bronx, you know, like, <laughs> but yeah, uh, Jose, we couldn't uh, dress him up, we couldn't put lipstick on yeah. him, <laughs> he, he didn't want to wear a wig. That was, <laughs> that, that was the weird thing, to see the, the guys in the scene like, yo. They were like, you rolling with some honey. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I'm like, yo, it's not like that, guys, it's not like that. I'm like, I actually cook for them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty, pretty much. He was our mom. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and, and who knows? The whole thing with Star Wars, like, oh, he left it because he got three girls. Then P.O.P. That's what he was uh, Star. Wars. Like, I hope it wasn't like that. I was like, shit. But it was weird because I was hoping that they make it. She's the only female back. Sure. Because I was like, wow, this should be right. Here. Because at first it was supposed to be this. You were just supposed to be like, oh, help me write these songs, or or, or you know, help me get something together. Uh, you know, and then and then and then like I because, didn't why I didn't want to change that though yeah, either sure. because of our connection. Because this girl, uh, so I'm glad that we didn't. I'm glad you you know yeah, you because, didn't grow titties. Still got hand pulled by another same But because this girl, because this girl was there and she was supposed to be a guitarist, mm -hmm. and I guess she's on the plane. I don't know what happened. I felt like she was, like you said, she wasn't getting into it. Well, no, I think she was into it. I think she was just occupied with a lot and distracted with a lot of other things. Because she, she, you know, she, she was dealing with her personal issues yeah. as well at that time. And it was very difficult to just like reach out to her and get her to, to come to a rehearsal or, or join us or whatever. And so the couple of times that she did was just like, awesome, you know, this yeah. is really going to happen. But then, but then it just kept like, 
never, it never, yeah, it never clicked the sure. way like it would click with, with just me and Jose in the bedroom, just like freaking playing and just listening to music and just getting inspired and breaking down the breakdowns. <laughs> I think that that's how the it's, um, that was my part in in, in the music. Yeah, you know, it's, it's huge. he was all the melodic stuff. Uh, I was just uh, like break down. Just like, just every every break band down. that we went to see. Really close. Everybody else. Oh, big like, Oh, break down. Okay. Like, I, I, like, that's like, what made me. That's what made then, me move. Uh, you know. So I'm like, I want to make people move like this too. You and know. Then for for that, it clicked me. From that moment, it clicked me. Like, all right, I need to study all these bands because the bands that are coming from the Bronx, they had a lot of breakdowns. They were just breakdowns and beatdowns. Uh huh. The pit was just boogie down. It was brutal. Yeah, boogie and, uh, down. Bridge. And always the shine, like always, like the main thing. I was like, okay, I need to like. It's a great thing because I was trying to get away from the burn down style because I don't, I didn't want to bring it to POP. Yeah. All right, so let me get the club, District Nine, go to Memphis, much more like death metal and everything else. Sure. Uh, I Ray. Wow. Uh huh. Uh, it was all all the bands. Yeah, but even like bands from outside of the Bronx and stuff like oh, yeah. that, because like you know we had like also like bands like Candiria that influenced uh -huh. us a lot. We had bands like Snapcase and 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 all those other bands from like the I city think... and out out of, out of the state. Even like you know like Earth Crisis, uh, uh -huh. Indecision, uh, Shut Down, and all you know all, all those like Shai whether it's Shai Halu, Shai Halu, Shai Halu, yeah, like even like and and even Eight Breed and stuff like that. You know, yeah. like you. It was stuff that we listened to all the time, and it's stuff that inspired us, That's you know? Right. So it was like, okay, yeah, so we, but because we were already, like, that, it filled us, it made us, yeah, sure. you know, having that, that information. So it just naturally came out how it was coming out, you know? We, we never thought about it too much. That's right. You yeah. know? It's a natural thing. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. We never, like, sat down and... No, we would just play it and then play it again and then it'll turn into something and then we'll play it again and then let, let that evolve and then play it again and let that evolve and play it again and let that evolve yeah. kind of situation. So, and, and, and yeah, like, cause again, Jose put us onto a lot of, like, the hardcore, like, outside, like, the, like, the, uh, like, the Bad Brains and uh -huh. Minor Thread, uh, Gorilla Biscuits and all those guys like that and stuff, like, for me, that was also very new yeah, because sure. I did when I first started getting into hardcore. I was more into like the metal and like the grindcore and like the 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 the, the crust punk and uh -huh. and just like dark darkness darkness, you yeah. know. Yeah, sure, 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 sure. <laughs> you know, and then and then right and then that kind of light and then like you know the the hardcore, you know, the guys like the Madball, the Gnostic Front, seeing those guys all the time and like getting their support as well, be, like or supporting them rather before I even started playing and after playing. Sure was also just like okay but like all of that was our influence or at least my influence and stuff of, of like being exposed to like hardcore new york city hardcore bronx hardcore Brooklyn hardcore wherever it came uh -huh. from jersey hardcore albany hardcore you know i always try to cut myself as open as possible with it sure. you know and then and then yeah and then like the chaos started happening like once once afterwards after we started developing and stuff like i kept developing you know, and I developed with the girls a lot with Jess, and she was, like, one of, like, also a, a big teacher for me as far as, like, how she played and, like, what I had to imagine and come up with what she was playing. And the same thing with Dean over with Johnny Cage's Fate, uh -huh. you know. Again, their, their way of playing was something always new for me. Sure. And so I would have to, like, do my homework and play and listen to a lot of bands that were similar style. or And then that's how I would develop, like, what I would play for... And so that kind of started happening with us in the beginning. Like, that's kind of where I first learned how to do that. Uh, I you know? see. So I he see. would come up with this here and that. So here, we will listen to certain things, and, and then it'll just inspire what it inspired. Yeah. Yeah. Um, before we go even more into proof of purchase, just a uh, general question, since there were so many women in Proof of purchase. What was it like for you as a woman in the scene at the time? In in what way? Because there's there's different different roles as as a woman in the scene, at least that I that I that I had. Sure. As far as like I 
again, before I was even a drummer, like my, my thing was supporting everyone. And I was just like one of the only girls in the pit all the time, yeah. just going off and just representing. And before I even had the band, I already had, yeah. and, and before, uh, well, right. I was like a pit monger. I would always go to the shows just to be, go off in the pit and stuff. And, and that was also responsible. Who was responsible for that? Like Jay Rate was responsible for that always going off in the pit that was uh -huh. like i just used to love seeing it and i would just always throw myself in the head first um little greg was also a very big uh, uh okay. influence for me sure. in, in the pit um so i would always go to the pit i was always representing the pit and so when i all these people knew me from like being the hardest girl in the pit y'all this one goes out to the hardest girl in the pit you yeah. know yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and and so when we got proof of purchase together i was like I received so much support from all of these people. Uh -huh. I have so much support from all of these people. Sure. And still till this day, but like, you know, th th for me, it was like, I was just going to see my brothers, yeah, you know, yeah, and, 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 and they took care of me all the time. They, you know, shared great experiences with me, shared great music with me. And, um, and as a drummer, being a woman drummer, that was a whole different story than yeah. just being the, uh, a supporter sure. in the, in the situation. Sure. Um, where yes, I did get a lot of support. Yeah. Uh, also I got a lot of like <laughs> shit sometimes, yeah, sure. not as much as maybe other women did get, Yeah. you know, uh, cause there were like a couple other girls that were in, in the, uh, in the hardcore scene or, or, do, or playing, uh, this style of music. Um, but for the most part, I got a lot of support. Yeah. I got a lot of support from people, but I think that also has to do with like the amount of support that I gave. Sure. You know, because sure. I was just like all over the place for everyone. Sure. You know? I res I respected what they were doing. I I believed in what they were doing. I was feeling <laughs> what they were doing. Yeah. You know, and 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 at that time in life, it was definitely a good escape for me from what I was dealing with emotionally. So that was a place where I was able to just like let it out. So yeah. feeling that release alone was just something that always called me. To come back to it, wow. you know. Yeah. But yeah. Before we move on, there's that. Uh, uh, you were asking me about a pivotal point in music. So my dad always used to bring bags of tapes and CDs and stuff to the house, and I remember one, uh, in Living Color, was oh, wow. one of the ones that was just like, man, this is awesome. You yeah. know, Alice Cooper and uh, and even Elvis Costello. Okay. How sure, about that? Sure. sure. Yeah. So that you know. <laughs> Huh. That worked its way in somehow. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Before I started getting into like the the, the heavier uh -huh, stuff. Uh huh. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, That's funny that you said that because it was the same thing with being color. Yeah. Watch. Yeah. Uh, poison. Yeah. I was like this glam metal, but still, it was like I saw they having PR, but still, I, that's when my friend just took me to like yo. It's back here. Yeah. I was like, oh my god! <laughs> I was like, yo, it was. <laughs> No return after yeah, that. yeah, but we also had bands here like um, like Hellbound, Hellbound, and yep. Crisis uh -huh. that were also just like very also big supporters of what I was doing at that time and stuff, and and just having having that yeah feeling that support and yeah. and and just really inspired me to want to do it to keep doing it as well you know because it was there were there were rough moments in life you know and and I could I thank hardcore for it. Yeah. I thank Hardcore for existing because that definitely pulled me out of a lot of, I mean, it put me into a lot of shit too, but it pulled me out of like <laughs> worse shit. Sure, you know, sure, so. sure, sure. Absolutely. <laughs> um, so with Proof of Purchase, um, what was the first show that Proof of Purchase played? What we did, like The Apartment maybe oh, was yeah, one of the yeah. first ones. Apartment yeah. show? Your apartment? Jesus. Yeah, probably. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I was just like, I gotta make this happen. <laughs> make it happen in my living room, you know. <laughs> what well, What was the cross street of, of of your apartment at the time? That one, that was on Freeman, yeah, in Bristol. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That was a small living room. Yeah. Small. Wow. Wow. You like? We did it. Wow. It's like it wasn't like it was. It was wow. Yeah. <laughs> All yeah, the yeah. way up, huh? <laughs> They didn't even call Fourth the, floor, everybody they, came they, up there with they, the... They didn't even call the cops or anything. We're Who the hell going to call the cops? <laughs> we just 
Man, and the thing is, it's like the neighborhood already knew me because I had yeah. that little makeshift drum set that Tito had had uh, given to me. <laughs> and so I would play like every afternoon, yeah. you know, and then like I would go downstairs and my, my neighbors were like, you know, oh, we were here when you play today, girl, you know, and they even support it. Yeah, you know? yeah, and yeah, so yeah, that yeah, was yeah. like, okay, okay, you know. Yeah. But that was like part of one of my escapes, you know, like drumming. Before that, I, I did, I used to like to draw a lot. And that was like where I would just like focus and kind of like close myself off to the world. And yeah. when I discovered drums, that, that, it started happening there too. And I was like, okay, I don't know if it has to do with like right brain, left brain shift yeah. when you're drawing yeah. and when you're playing on both sides. I'm, I'm thinking that that's what it is, you know? Sure. But those like, you know, those are like the only places where I actually start feeling that, that kind of shift and that kind of like centeredness and you know so so drums i mean i'm till this day you know it's yeah. still like my kung fu it's yeah. still that place where i go to where if i have issues out in the world i like lock myself up and i'll like figure out a new beat and once that beat is just like in its pocket like the rest of the everything outside just kind of like falls into place i don't know what it is but wow yeah so like yeah yeah and what about um some of the other early shows that uh Proof of Purchase played? Well, we did like Continental, uh -huh. we did Pyramid, uh, Con uh, Coney Island High, Blackthorn, Blackthorn, Blackthorn uh, sure. lots of Castle Heights show. Thanks. I'm sure, yeah. Thanks to those guys yeah. too for always opening the doors for yeah. us. And man, because we like, I was a little brat, you know, I, like <laughs> I was just always trying to get into every show for free, you know? Yeah, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm and there, I'm like, damn. We in. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> you know? But the, everybody just always saw me represent, you know. So that, that you know, that, that the doors just always automatically opened in that way. And I appreciate it so much till this day, you know. But, uh, and then we finally, we, we finally got to play series. Yeah. As proof of purchase, too. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Was, that was great, that too, was, because that was like a line around the corner when we was just like getting yeah. there. But it would be, uh, for we, Dillinger yeah. Escape Plan. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Dillinger, wow. I think. Oh, was, was, wow. Yeah. That band was intense with their first single. Uh huh. That was crazy because he had like that whole, like, like a uh, MIDI setup or whatever there for his voice, and you yeah. see him like kind of move it back and forth and drooling all out of his mouth. And, and, uh, and we're like, what the fuck is this? Yo, this is like, crazy. Yeah. I was like, wow. And the fact that we, we opened for them, I was like, yo, what the? Yeah, That's yeah, crazy. yeah, yeah, yeah. But them playing live, I was like, wow, yeah, yeah, that was something else. Yeah, yeah, that was, yeah, yeah. Yeah, me, yeah, their show was amazing. To me, it hit me a little harder because it was. Never thought that twice. Burn down. And proof of purchase. purchase. I was like, I was shocked. I was like, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> let's go. <laughs> well, I don't know if this associate played that show, but I know we probably did play a couple of shows with this associate in uh in uh in um at CVs as well. Because Ralph Fibor used to have the tour, remember? I think it's associate I was there, but but I think we only played. <clears throat> I think we played a couple of times. Or maybe I'm once thinking and like thinking yeah, about it, it, playing it with the girls too. We, we only play only. I think it was only one time that series. We grew part two. That was the thing. Well, I, uh, I've been there. I played there with like almost every band. So oh yeah, I've got them all. <laughs> <in my laughs> <stuff>. <laughs> you played it with every band. That was like, the whole thing. That was like <laughs> that was that was like that was like the goal. Yeah, you know sure. that was the goal. Make it to CBs, and Absolutely. you're making yeah, it. You that, know? That, so I was just like every band that was like yeah, my that, prime thing. Let's play CBs. You know, <laughs> I worked one. towards just to play CBs. You know, for for quite some time. You know, <laughs> that was one thing. Like every, every, every band's goal was to play CBs. Yeah, like you, you have to go to CBs. Yeah, to yeah, CBs. yeah, yeah. Like every continental, wetlands, whatever. It's like yeah, CB was the main. It was like. You you have to have that in your in your portfolio. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And it was like just just to play there, the sound, everything, the it, the history. It was wow, amazing. Mm -hmm. it was yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You kind of got that sense of like, wow, we're making it or we're doing it. You yeah. know. Now, do you remember when Proof of Purchase played CBs? Where where the burn down? Um, uh, I remember that was still there. <laughs> <laughs> they probably saw me doing that, like, yeah, man. When they finish, you raise that no, shit. Well, <laughs> well, well, proof of Purchase, you designed the, the logo for Proof of Purchase, oh, man, too, that right? Was, that was, that, 
that design was. Oof. I liked it. It was nice. Yeah. It yeah. Was, yeah. Yeah. Uh, compared to Berna, I think Cooper was better. That was something like because I think I went over like it was just and it was so long. I'm trying to like yeah make it small and everything like trying to squeeze it and it was came out perfect. It came out like. Yo, this is the top of shit. We never got to the shirt. I really wanted to do the shirt. I think we never did. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that was something you know, that was a different project. Like, you get the shirts, what size, what uh, fabric, everything else. Then. Yeah, yeah. But I think that was the time that Mari was leaving for school or something. It was, we never got to that point. Mm -hmm. But I, I had I had that logo. Was, and at, at the same time, when I did that, I made the, the bronze hardcore logo. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was a dope one too. That's that to still be a really good shirt, Jose. Yeah. yeah. We'll see. Do you still yeah. have that logo? Yeah, I still have it. Oh, wow. <laughs> I, uh, I hate it sometimes that you do the art, you know, you are whatever you put together. Sometimes you lose it, or you move so many times, and you're like, shit, what happened to this? Yeah. You know, like, like, I did the best that I can to keep some of that stuff, and like, Amazing. the who purchased have it, and the bronze one is just that one. Because that would to me that was this is the bronze and it's hardcore here having Yeah, because it was it was it was graffiti, but it was still like there was a class to it. Yeah. You know, there was a class to it and it, and then it and it didn't steer away from like the the that, that, that like stick figure New York hardcore kinda thing that was happening either, uh -huh. you know. But it and it made sense. It wasn't like cluttered, it wasn't just like yeah, I remember that logo. I really liked it, yeah. And it, what I wanted was that to represent every band from the Bronx. Like, yo, we took this. This is yeah, uh, yeah. We're from here. Yeah, yeah. Wow. And we came here to from the Bronx. That's what it's. Mm -hmm. so. Wow. Now, Jose, before before you designed these logos, were you were you a graph writer at all, or just influenced by it? I was. In, it's interesting because uh, when I was a kid, I was just drawing stuff. I was just drawing um, robots and making everything else. Yeah. And uh, then first time when I went to I think it was high school. There was a, a class called industrial class, all industrial, never here before. I was like, wow. And I was assigned to that class. And there was pretty, pretty drawings and everything. I was like, ooh. And that's when I took it to a next step. I never knew anything about graffiti in PR. Yeah, Nothing sure. About that. It was, I guess, tagging or something, though, but I never tagged. So. Yeah. Uh, but when I was a kid, I was always drawing, always drawing mechs and robots and everything. I was like, must have been Grand Dice, all the stuff. And then when I was a kid, showing the cartoons. And um, when we moved back to New York, that when I see the graffiti, uh -huh. oh shit! All right. And then I venture myself to go out there. It's kind of suck because like my family would not know where I am. Yeah. And I would just go check the train, check the tunnels, uh -huh. and stuff, and I see the graffiti. I'm like wow, it looks amazing. The graffiti is amazing. And all these tags everywhere. And that's when um, and I still have the whole band's name because every band's name was so like death metal fonts and everything I was like god damn but the graffiti ones like more like a skater thing yeah yeah so sure. it was like and I figured it was hardcore too because it, it was somehow I don't know graffiti was really compared with hardcore music I don't know why yeah um, well I think because of that because of the skate culture yeah skate as well. culture yeah yeah, yeah. that's um, right and I, I just decided you know what I need to the project need to be like a nice tag the name and I made the bronze hardcore and I was like wow this is it if I, if I could stencil this and that's it it's done and I could just have to go and just do it hopefully don't get no cops and beat me up and what are you doing dude what the heck are you doing and I see my family is like what the hell are you doing dude oh, shit I was just tagging I need to put my name here can't you see it's an empty spot no yeah it's an empty spot on top of somebody's spot exactly, so like, exactly. Uh, yeah, but it was, I started drawing, and um, that was influenced with the graffiti, and I started doing more drawings, and uh, people asked me if I could make drawings for tattoo design and everything. I did a few, maybe, and they actually got a tattoo and everything. I was kind of wow. happy. I was like, and they asked me how they wanted or something dark, something like gothic, whatever. I'm like, okay, let me just give me more info. I need to, like, visualize what I'm doing now. And um, that was it, then. I stopped for a long time now. Yeah. Was, but I, I kept all my artwork because like, something reminded me of the past. I was like, when you're so creative, you can't stop it. Yeah. Unless yeah. something happens. Like, wow. 
It's still there too. Once whenever you want to tap into it, you know. That's right. Yeah, that's why I kept it because I want to go back so bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, so was burn down or or I guess and or proof of purchase were, were either bands part of um, the Boogie Down crew? Yeah, proof of purchase kind of was kind yeah, of boogie, no, yeah. Was, yeah. We got a lot of support from BDC. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. Not, not much I, I definitely yeah, rep BBC yeah. all the time. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. They were those my brothers, you know. I guess Burn Down might have been a little, maybe a little too early or right at the early stage. Maybe way, not. No, no, it, it wasn't. They it, were more like Manhattan kind of. Pretty yeah. much, yeah. It yeah. Was, it's, it's, it's a different crowd, pretty much. But, I it was, see. but it was still mixed with the post crowd. It was a different crowd. Uh, I see, yeah. I see, I see, I see. I see. Um, and would... The proof of purchase members, would you all go to like the BDC meetings? I think there was what, like once a month or something like that that Tito would have at his house? Once in a while. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've made, I, I made one or two of those. And I think Ramon helped make a zine. I yeah. think the first first and only issue of it. Um, we have a copy of it now. But oh, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Nice, um, nice. But, but yeah. Um, did. Uh, did you keep playing with that same drum kit um, with Proof of Purchase for like the entire time of Proof of Purchase, the same drum kit that you started out playing with? No. Yeah. I finally like uh, made enough money working to get my own little, uh, what was it, uh, a Yamaha Stage Custom was my, my first official <coughs> kit that I had actually purchased. And I uh, just found it in Long Island in... in Last year, I wow. can't believe it's still alive. Wow. <laughs> I was like, "Oh, dip. my buddy has it in his studio." I'm wow! Like, oh, thank you for taking care of it. That's cool. Is 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 the the Tito hand me down drum kit still around anywhere? No, I can't find that one. I've been looking for it too. I'm like, man, what I do for it? But for because I think after a while, it, it, when I when I have gotten the uh, the, the the Yamaha, I, I um. I started using that as like my dinner table, like uh, as my like night table, yeah, and night sure, stand. Sure. I just like used it as a decorative kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then I moved around so much, so sure. I kind of lost a lot of things. That makes sense. So. That makes sense. <laughs> um, and what about uh, recordings with proof of purchase? I know that's something we were talking about before we started recording today. Um, but what all did proof of purchase record? We did. Um, we did the SOU thing. That was the best thing ever. The SOU? Yeah, that, that was, was pretty cool. Never thought in my life that we were actually doing that. Yeah, yeah. Because it was just me that was just starting to into music when I got here. Yeah. Like, yeah. We here now? Uh huh. Oh, wow. Yeah. I was shocked. I right, was like, right, for me too. Because uh, it was just like, I, who gave us who gave us that opening? Because uh, Glenn was, was, was doing it at that time, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah, Glenn was doing it, yeah. Uh, it was. Never thought in my life. Like, yeah. Like, all right. Series, yeah, for me, it was just like series, awesome. See, it's one thing, but we're playing what? The radio uh -huh, and stuff. We're uh -huh. like, oh my God, we're actually I on was the radio. Like, yeah. I, I, I was, was so excited. That was something. I was like, like even shouting out my boyfriend at the time because I was so excited. <laughs> you know, the, the list of shout outs and stuff. <laughs> just trying to always acknowledge people, you know. We were like nervous too. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we did so well though. Uh, like, yeah, I, I was surprised. Like, we were like, I think now. we did well. Yeah, uh, yeah, that was something that, and it was our, our, our first recording because we took that right a few songs and, and made a tape out of it. Right, wow, right. Uh, uh, like a, not a tape, like a little yeah, like mini, a demo, like a demo, yeah, demo. yeah, yeah. yeah. Like so four, we did that. four songs, right? Um, and then we did the. Uh, the new, the new phone hold uh -huh. that we just remembered we did thanks to Ramon. <laughs> That's right, and then and then this uh, and then the new approach that we did with approach. Purity Records, yeah, uh -huh. and that was like thanks to Beyond Reason and Locked in a Vacancy. Wow, they opened up that door for us. They were great too, you know. And and this is also a thing that like I had so many great people always lending me their their instrument, you know, and their drums and stuff. Because I was always, you know, for me, it was always <laughs> the hardest to get the, the drum set to the show, you know. Absolutely. Jose, Jose would roll his, you know, amp in the trains. <laughs> but I couldn't you roll my drum you set. Bring all the time. <laughs> 
I can't even roll my nose like that. You know? <laughs> I don't even know how we're doing that, but because so, we guess, were determined, we yeah, wanted yeah. the shit to happen, so we yeah. just fucking made it happen. We, you know? we, we were so dedicated. <laughs> of, it's, it's gonna happen. There's no way. It's like, <laughs> bro, you lucky you didn't throw your back out with the amp down. No, but he almost he fell once, and oh, like we had yeah, to, uh, yeah, one time, fuck yeah. his knee up a little bit. Oh, you know, yeah. yeah. Uh, Freaking clubbing pants. I was like, this- <laughs> <laughs> I was like just, why should I wear these pants? I used to go clubbing too. I was like, and, uh, and the funny thing is, like, cause there, I think we went to a show, went to a uh, rehearsal or something, and they were waiting on the train station uh, above. And they see me come out of the house, and I get the guitar on the app, and I'm running, and I trip on my pants. <laughs> And then I, I realized I scratched myself and I started bleeding. They don't see that. They they're laughing like, look at this guy's shit. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, and I like I have to go back home just to like patch it up and everything. And they're like they're like, what happened? Yeah, uh, look what happened. We, 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 didn't, we didn't know it was that 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 deep. <laughs> yeah, it was like oh blood. I was like, All right, let's go. But I don't even know we were going to a show. Like, we, we were probably going up Castle Heights or something. Yeah. Or, you know, yeah. Carry my shield. Like, let's go. Let's yeah. go. <laughs> <laughs> wow! Yeah, but I had like you know I had like a lot of friends like he Glenn would lend me his drum set. Uh, yeah. Rick from Rick uh, Rick from uh, Beyond Reason and Locked in a Vacancy. Uh, also always was like here you know always 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 always. Like, yeah, he yeah, never even yeah, thought twice that. about it. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think that kid belonged to Heather actually, which was his girlfriend at the time. Mm. But um. But yeah, no, super, like, grateful for, for people like that, that, that have always, like, helped us in whatever way. I mean, even after a while, I was playing in all of these bands, and I was always, like, breaking cymbals and stuff, and, and we'd get into these venues, and, like, these bands would just look at me and feel so sad. <laughs> Here, take this, please, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and I'm like, thank you, you know? Yeah, I couldn't afford all that stuff, yeah, you know? Really I couldn't expensive. afford all that stuff, you know? The drums were, at that time especially, oh, you know, so was so expensive. expensive, and, you know, I was just hustling and trying to find my way through life, dealing with whatever was being dealt with at home as well and sure. all that so it was like okay you know being a high school dropout as well like no education I just educated myself in the streets so it was like having that support system you know from this scene was always it just always felt like home yeah yeah it just always felt like home yeah um, I mean granted people were kind of always a little scared <laughs> lend me that shit but <laughs> I tried my best and did my best to not break anybody's shit if it wasn't mine. But if it was mine, I didn't give a fuck. I'm yeah, for like sure. Coming down on this, you know. <laughs> did you um? Did you start singing in Proof of Purchase, like backup vocals or anything like that at any point? No, no, no. Okay, I didn't really get into later. the drumming singing thing until like a little before COVID, actually. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. okay. I mean, I did singing separately. Yeah, and sure. And that was like at, in high school or whatever. I see. And then... uh. And then during like my whole time with metal and hardcore or whatever, I think there was once where I tried to sing for ADD, and man, that was so freaking cool. But that involved so much energy, yeah, and that's, um, that's... but we had one well, finding someone else to to come and take that over. Yeah. And in a way, I think I could have done it now that I look back at it because it did just flow a certain way, and I was yeah. just like shit. And we were all kind of like, "Fuck, you just did it." And I'm like, "Oh shit, didn't I?" You know. And but then but then now it's just a new study for me to so, so like play and, and sing at the same time. So yeah. that's something that I'm developing more now, even than when I first started doing it like five, six, seven years ago or something. Yeah. Um so as far as um proof of purchase goes, um like what did the how did the end of proof of purchase come about? Well, my sister was more dedicated to her studies. Yeah. And I didn't want to do it without her. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. So we, we split the band up. And yeah. also Jackie was pregnant at that time. Yeah. So that was, and Will was was helping us with as a replacement oh, at that yeah, time. Oh, yeah, sure, sure, sure. And um, so it was just that time, yep. I feel, a little bit. I mean, had she, had she stayed, I think, you know, I it would have been a whole different thing. Yeah. But um, I didn't want to give her that stress either because sure. she was, you know, she dedicated herself yeah. to her education. So I don't want to, you know, I'm I'm a dropout. I'm like, you know, I'm still hustling, <laughs> but, <laughs> you know. But um, 
but yeah, I didn't want to, I didn't want to influence her in that way. I didn't want to, you know, I wanted to make sure she got her education in and, yeah. and did, did all that stuff for herself. So when she was like, you know, wanting to focus more on her studies, it was just like, okay, well, you know, let's just make this the last, because I didn't want to, I don't know, I just didn't want to have it so it extended periods of not doing and then doing and not doing and doing. I'm always sense. such a let's go, keep going kind of person. Yeah. So that was, you know, and then after that, well, I mean, like once I, I left, um, uh, Jess showed up at the tattoo parlor I worked at. She was like eight months pregnant. You left proof of purchase. I need a drummer for the show at CB's. First show with them was at CB. She's like nine months pregnant with this bubble cold around her belly, guarding her guitar. <laughs> She's like stomping around on stage. And oh I'm like, my God, that's amazing. Fuck, this shit rocks, you know? <laughs> and, then, and then the shift happened, and then I started focusing on them. Yeah. But um, I don't think I would have really like let go of Proof of Purchase. Uh, proof of Purchase was like my baby, you yeah. know, for, for, for a time. And, um, and Jose was the daddy. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Now, did the two of you play in anything after Proof of Purchase together? Not together, no. I, I tried with, uh, with Jackie and somebody else. Like me, uh, Alex. Mm. Alex, no. Alex, what was him? The drummer from... Um, Memorial Rights Reserve, right? yeah. Reserve. Sorry, yeah. yeah. Oh, Alex was also sure. one of like my first influences. Yeah. Sure. We were always as a drummer. Wanted to play really bad. Like I wanted to play like I wanted to have Gigi like it will always but never happens. Never never happens. It was always because he had his band, got burned down, got starved, we were purchased. And then we just, we never got to play together. And then, yeah. we, and then we finally did it. And it was just got together and then it just for some reason, we have this singer. He was putting so much pressure. Like he wanted to be a rock star. I was like, "No, it's not like that. Dude. You're having fun here. Let's we'll see what happens." Then. Uh, but I guess since POP was done, like when rap when we started in front, of that, I was like, I, "It was so much energy that was it, it was I was drained." Like you know what? Yeah. And. This person wasn't helping, trying to like rush, 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 you know, like, and Alex and Jack were like, yo, this is not, you know, yeah. we were not having fun. Yeah, you know, sure, like, sure. Uh, and we tried, I tried the best I could, I was like, you know what? That's <sighs> cool, though, that you tried with Alex, because Alex, man, Alex, again, he's like probably one of the first drummers that I really started paying attention to, and he always had his own little way of playing, and. And it was like just that, and even like when when I left uh, Johnny Cage, he 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 played with them for a little while too. And I'm like, I'm glad that I wouldn't want to see it with anyone else in a way, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because she sure. was definitely one of like my first influences as wow. a drummer. So I was just like, yeah, fuck yeah, wow. you know? Yeah, yeah. It was it was that good, man. I was like, I think the thing that needed to happen was I needed to spend more time with him. Same thing I did with her. Yeah. To grow together. Yeah. Sure. With no no other influence. Nobody yeah. else trying to rush. Yeah. And then maybe, maybe. Because I always wanted to play with him. He was like, yo, we want to play together. And he wanted to play with me. I was like, it just, I guess we, we got rushed into like so, like, like influence. Like, it, it just didn't happen. I see. I see. Wow. Um. So, Gigi, I know you play, had played in. And many other bands, um, you know, since then, uh, um, and obviously we can't, you know, begin to do justice to, to all of them, but, um, but yeah, I guess maybe, um, what do you think? Does it make sense to go up through another dying democracy mm -hmm. and maybe cut off there, uh, for the time being? What do you think? That makes sense to you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so so yeah. What talk talk about your musical journey after proof of purchase? Um, I mean, I know you started playing with um, um with Jesse and uh, um and how long 
did that go on for? ADD. We went. We went on for a while. We went on for a while. We were called sick of the abuse at that time. Oh, okay. When okay. I that first was the started. First name. Sick of yeah, the abuse. I see. Yeah. When we I first see. started, and then we turned it into another dying democracy. I um, see. And um. And that was and, like a New York City wide kind of thing, right? Yeah. Were, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, we, yeah. Yeah, we did a lot. You know, we. Man, that was great because we, you know, again, it was an all girl thing. And, um, and at that time I was also playing with Step Too Far, I think. I started, I had started oh, playing with Step Too right, Far for a little right. while wow. as well. And so, like, and they were like the female energy, you know, that I, that I think I needed at that time because I was yeah. always just around my boy. So that was really cool. Um, and working with her, it's, it, it, I just learned a lot working with her because she she was actual an actual musician. You know, she went to school for it as well. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> and it was metal. It was different, like the way she wrote. Because I remember when she gave me the uh, the sick of the abuse demo, I was just like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> I didn't understand about that yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, but sure. I, I'm listening to like. What she's playing, and I'm like, I'm making sense of what she's playing. Okay, I like what she's playing. Yeah. I like her melodies. I like those notes that she's playing, you know. And so I gave it a shot, and then, and we, the same thing, like with Jose, like with me and her, it just clicked. Mesh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and it just, like, it just worked out. And, and with that, I think, was a, was a bass player from Manhattan? She was from, she was from Brooklyn, right? Je Jesse, is that right? Jess was a guitarist. She was from Brooklyn. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, we went through a couple because we had Mindy at first oh, playing bass, okay, okay, and okay. then Teresa. I see, I right. see, I see Teresa. Yeah, that's yeah. What yeah. And then at that point, we had uh, two singers, Katie and uh, Nico, and they both fell off with their life thing. And then we had gotten uh, Rob for a little while. Uh huh. And then we had gotten Aisha. Aisha, yeah, 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 sure. yeah, yeah. And sure. Then that, and then you know, you know, we we toured with the baby with us, and yeah, yeah, wow. yeah, yeah, yeah. We would, yeah, we. We didn't care. We were just like, we're going to make it happen. Summertime tours, let's go. You know, DIY, everything yeah. DIY. We did a lot of like food not bomb houses. We did uh -huh. a lot of like uh, those kind of parties and stuff. Absolutely. And venues here and there. But yeah, yeah. That was that was great too. It was also an amazing experience just to be on tour with a kid, you know, and just like having to just make it work. Yeah. You know, any way we, that we could. Yeah. You know, so that was also. One of the things I appreciate about working with Jess that we never stop. Like we were just like, yeah, we're doing it, we're doing it, you know. And how 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 long was another Dying Democracy together? As ADD, for a while. Yeah, yeah. For a while, wow. I don't know, maybe like four or five years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's what probably. I thought. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Wow. And at that time, well, at that time, I was working with uh, with Step Too Far, with Frankie and Step Too Far, uh -huh. and Gio and these guys, um, and, Car and, and, and Carlos. And then um, <clears throat> I was also doing uh, the the Johnny Cage's Fake. Oh, that's right, that's right, right. that's right. Yeah, and who who all was in Johnny Cage is a Fake? Uh, Ryan. He was a he was a high school friend. And then uh, Will was uh, yeah. playing bass. Will from Blackout. Sure. And uh, Dean. Dean used to play with Will inside, oh, and that's how side. I met sure, him. Sure, sure, right, sure. and uh, and it was us four. We were just a four-piece powerhouse. Yeah, yeah, that was interesting too, man. That was hard, 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 hard. So you were playing in Johnny Cage's A Fake and Another Dying Democracy at the same time. Yeah, and step too far, I guess. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Maybe other bands too. Um, at that point, no, it was mainly okay, those okay. three lot, at that though. time. Yeah, Three it was bands. mainly those three at that time. <laughs> wow. Yeah, but I think that, like, I, th at that time, music was already turning, or drumming was turning into my lifestyle. It yeah. wasn't my hobby. Sure. So I was always trying to find a way to keep it that present. So sure. I, it, it involved working with various bands, because just working with one band, everybody's got their job. No one right. had the idea of, like, wanting to make it happen the way that I wanted to make it happen. Yeah. So I had to always adjust and shift and adjust and shift and... And it worked out well because each thing influenced different things in my playing sure. and in my being as well. So sure, and, and all of those bands had, you know, pretty pretty different uh, Different uh, styles. Sounds, yeah, right? different sounds, different styles. Yeah, 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 you know. Um, and when did Dominican Day Parade come into the mix as far as you playing with them? That was, I guess. I that guess was, was fun. That was that was post Johnny Cage. Yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. 
post Johnny Cage. Um, and that just also just happened and clicked. <laughs> Lenny was just like, we're doing a band. And I'm like, <laughs> okay. Mondo's like, it's Dominican Day Parade. And I'm like, okay. And then we just did it. We just did it. Yeah. They would come over to my rehearsal space and we would just, we had like this eight track <laughs> recorder and we would just start. <laughs> I know it was just a random rec- And because we had it, we were like, just let's just use it, you know? Yeah. And then we just started recording on that first. And then we did like a couple like little four track recordings or whatever. And then we actually finally got in, I don't, I think we got into a studio at some point or we went to a studio to do vocals for someone else. I don't know. Something <laughs> happened. <laughs> But that was also a nice cloudy time yeah. in life. <laughs> Len- Lenny said the whole point of that band was to see how drunk you could get while still playing the song successfully. <laughs> yeah, that was that was our gimmick. That we, you know, our thing was just like we were supposed to break up every show, and every show was supposed to be a reunion. We were supposed to rip every freaking hardcore band off, that, you know, and 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 we did that. <laughs> we totally did that. <laughs> Oh man, I miss those guys. I can't wait to see them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Um, so uh, I know that there are, are are many other chapters of your life musically after, uh, or, you know, after the hardcore, hardcore yeah. and metal kinds of uh, phases. So I guess uh, in in lieu of trying to rush through any of those. Um, if you just like to give like, uh, you know, I guess a summary of where your musical journey has taken you, um, since all of that. Yeah. Uh, well, it's, um, it's taken me all over the world, really. You know, it's taken me almost all over the world without even having to, without, yeah, it's just taken me all over, like every, anywhere that I go. I mean, since then, okay. Since the hardcore, like I never found anything to fill me as much as hardcore did, except for, like, uh, West African drumming. Okay, sure, sure, sure. And so I started getting into that a little bit more when yeah. I first uh, moved over to Spain after leaving here. But there was also uh, uh, the reason why it even landed in Spain was because of a band that I played for here and between here and Dominican Republic called Jolido Loco Sucio, JLS. Um, and some of these guys were guys from Blue Pelta. Uh, oh shit. Yeah. Oh, okay. Back then. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's yeah. crazy. I had no idea. The Dominicans wow. yeah, that were into the metal and uh-huh, stuff like uh-huh. that from that time. Um and so I uh, uh I, I, I still played a lot of metal. I played after proof of purchase and all of the New York Hearts were stuff, I started working with Leo a little bit more and then but then when I went to Spain, um I just kinda like stayed working with him for a little while, doing the metal stuff. And then that started evolving. Then I started playing like a bunch of covers with a bunch of different like uh, groups over there and stuff because it's very difficult to like come up with a to do a like solid band like what we do here sure. or what we did here you know like sure. that companionship that time and so even there I had to always have like a lot of projects to make it happen because everyone's just like a hired gun at yeah. that point you I know see. yeah um, so yeah like JLS before then too I was working with like some anti folk from here in Brooklyn like Doofus I don't know if you know those guys. Um, but that's like a whole nother scene in, yeah. in here. Uh, 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 yeah, like more kind of like, yeah, it, it was like, for me, it was like, it was like coming from like my rough shit into like, like some, some hippie ass shit, you know, <laughs> <laughs> it was just like, all right, you know, so I, I, I learned how to like curb my ghettoness a little bit. <laughs> But not at the same time because this shit just still come out if it need to, you know. But but yeah, you know. Again, it was like more white people, more uh, <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah. It was like I couldn't go around and be like, "Yo, nigga, this, yo, nigga, that," you know. <laughs> Which, <laughs> so you know, it helped me uh, adjust my language. But uh, but yeah, you know, and um, and and so like all of that still part of like what has influenced me, you know. Sure. Um, I give everyone. Their uh, their credit for dealing with me <laughs> and for tolerating me, um, but also like just for teaching me. Sure, you know. And uh, now I'm I'm doing the the drumming singing thing. I'm I'm working on my own productions now. Um, the last couple of years, obviously, I've been working on uh, just establishing a business, and so the music has been a little bit on the a little bit in the back, but now it's starting to come back to the forefront and, and uh, it's just been 
lately just studying all this production stuff so that way I can get this project out. Uh, this project is called G3. And, um, and yeah, it's, it's, it's like what I came from. So it's very hard to explain. You have to kind of hear it to, sure. to see all the different ways that I've come about musically. Yeah. And they're just, yeah, they're different movements. Yeah. I mean, uh, what else? There was probably like, I probably like helped EGH out for a little while. I think that was what turned me into a powerhouse too. Oh, okay. Uh, wow. Uh, Chris Bonetto's like, you hit like girl G and I'm like, okay. <laughs> Yeah, I have a vagina, I think, you know, <laughs> like, how am I supposed to hit, you know? But, but no, that, that, that really shifted a lot in my playing. I see. And I then, see. and now it's just like, everybody knows that I'm playing because of that just signature snares yeah. smack that I have nowadays where everyone's just like, <laughs> what is this? Like, but yeah, people like that, things like that, you know, that have encouraged me, that have supported me, that have uh, helped me through the journey as well and open those doors and you know like no one ever let me fall yeah you know so I'm so grateful so grateful for everyone and all of them and uh, it's been such a journey too like since then to now and and being able to talk about it now or being able to to even remember it is yeah. like is fulfilling absolutely um, well, I, I have a, a final question that I always ask at the end, but before I get there, um, Jose or Gigi, do you have anything you'd like to add that you haven't had the chance to talk about yet? Um, the only thing I wish, it would never happen, that we could play a little more. There's something that was more stuff. Like the material that we have, we, we, we never, we were trying to achieve this like satisfaction. Like, okay, we have the right track now. We were, but not quite there yet. And I guess it just things happens. Yeah, you know, and don't do anything about it. But I appreciate everything that you did for me. You have fun. It was freaking fun, dude. It was like what absolutely. The fuck? Yeah. Um, it was something that I'll keep it in my heart and I got with it. Uh, with people that I met, people that I play with, they're like family, brothers and sisters. So uh, it's something that uh, I thought it would never happen. I mean, growing up, you're a kid, you have no idea, you like this, whatever, and you have no idea where life's going to take you. But you never know. You make that step, you open your mouth. You do action, something happens. Like, uh huh. You, know, you bring that positive to you, things happen. That shit. I'm right. working on productions. If you ever want to write some guitar parts, I could always track some oh drums. My God. My man's never shit is done different That's nowadays, right. too. And shit, yeah, we got yeah. the That's right. internet. We ain't got to pay so many. Yeah, I know. Yeah, like calling promoters. We could just record it, put it up That's there. That's right. Absolutely. You know? uh, we'll see. I'm, I'm, so I'm, if you ever want to get that vein out again, you know, I'm, 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 I'll always be here to be a part of your creative process. And, We'll see. I'm, 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 I'm thinking about it. We'll, we'll see what happens. I gotta take care of some things first. And These are the kind of seeds. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> let's see what happens first. Uh, <laughs> but once I take care of that, um, I don't mind seeing this one because it's still there. Like, I want to like, all right. I want to do this again. You know, yeah, I mean, like it. that's definitely like one of my. I never wanted to leave any of the bands that I've played for, but things happen. Yeah. That's right. You know. Things happen and for a reason. Right. For a reason, that's what it is. Yeah, you know, and but again, I appreciate all of the experiences, all the people that I've come across, all the bands, all of the you know the supporters, the or all of it, all of the venues, the everything. You for for making this happen yes. too, and thank you so and much. Talking about this and getting us all together in this way, it's you know it's it's a healing thing. Yeah. You know? yeah. And I think a lot of us needed that too. And again, you know, growing up in the Bronx. It wasn't easy, not in the eighties, especially you know no. i half of my teenage years, I was like helping i I worked with banana Kelly, so it was just like oh, see, rebuilding the Bronx yep. you uh -huh. know and and of course, you know that that you could only do that for a certain amount of time but but it was still like I'm all about community, 
you know, and, and, and to the point where I was building my community when I was in my teens, you know, yeah. in that way. I mean, like I learned a lot of construction trade. We renovated so many buildings and, and rebuilt so many like bars into like uh, into like computer spaces and sure. all this, you know, and and and. You know, hardcore for me is a community. You yeah. know, all those guys, Agnostic Front, all, all, all of, you know, from from that time, you know, to, to now, to like the people that are still doing it right now. I mean, I'm not really into the scene as I used to be before. I don't know like what new bands are happening or anything like that. But if they're there doing it, I'm going to support it regardless, Absolutely. you know, because it is it is a way for us to. To, to channel our, our emotional instability. It's a way That's for right. us to, 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 to kind of separate ourselves too from like all the shit that we're dealing with or whatever, you know, because, you know, it, the music keeps you present. Yep. The music keeps you present, you know, and being present is like the most healing that you could experience, you know. Absolutely. And so, yeah, some of that. And then, you know, the music thing, the farming thing, the healing thing, that's like what, what my, I, Turn my world into, sure. you know, and traveling and all that. But music has never, you know, has never been. Since I started putting it front, it's been very rare that it's been a secondary thing in my life. Yeah, you know. In these last couple of years with COVID, well, I had to adjust that because I had gotten like all these tours canceled and all these dates, and and, and it's like, okay, hey, <laughs> this is all I'm working on right now, <laughs> you know. So I had to find a new hustle real quick. But um, but it's there that you know the business is rolling, and now I can focus again on the music and like dive deep again, you know. And this I think this is part of closing one chapter and beginning the new chapter in like my my music career at least, you know. Absolutely, so. absolutely. Well, the final question I have for both of you is: um, Is there a Bronx hardcore or heavy or metal sound? And, or, you know, it doesn't have to necessarily be a sound. Um, and if so, how would you describe it? The boogie down groove. The boogie down groove is something that always separated me from a lot of other drummers that were doing like hardcore or metal or any of that stuff. And you hear it in the drummers that come from the Bronx. Yeah. You hear it in Ray. You hear it in UV, you hear it in Glenn even, because Glenn has been around the Bronx too yeah, <laughs> enough, that's right, you know, that's right. like, you know, that, uh, yeah, that was, a, that, that, I don't know, it's just a certain kind of groove yeah. that, yeah, you don't hear it in, an, um, in, in any other kind of styles of hardcore. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's, that's, yeah. That's what it's called, Bronx hardcore. Yeah. Uh-huh. The BX, right? The Boogie yep. Down Groove Kid. Talk, talking to the, the man who literally designed the Bronx Hardcore logo here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 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 not anybody seen it, but only a few seen it. No, we're going to make some yeah. shirts. Oh, yeah, we're going to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we're going to make this. Yep. Jose, what do you think? Uh, she says, man, it's like a... Uh, I could punch our experience. It's, it's, like, it's funny because compared to other scenes out of the Bronx, it's so, so different. It, it was a family, and it's still a family when mm -hmm. it comes to the Bronx scene. It's just, it's, it's, I don't know how to explain it, but it's like, like we all know each other. We all know that we like this. We're all into this. And we all respect and everything. And support each other. Yeah. And uh, it's a matter of what the person is doing, whatever, if he's leaving or he's gone or he's not in the scene anymore. We still have respect for you, don't worry about it. So it, just, it was something that I thought, again, Never in my life before we we have a scene in the, in the Bronx. Never for some reason. Yeah, I don't know sure. why, and it, it happens. It was like yeah, you get stuck into you. You part of that scene. You never, you're not gonna forget that. No, no, no. It's something that uh, so much love. Yeah, so much love. So much and love. for for angry kids, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that was the one thing like, we used to say. Like a bunch of thug playing hardcore. <laughs> <laughs> Like, All like, we wanted to do was go out and because punch you, people in the face. Cause you don't, yeah, because you don't see, like, in the past, it's like, with the hardcore kids or metal kids <clears> in, the, in the Bronx, they, they barely wear, like, a metal shirt, like, like a hood or something, like, yeah, sure. all baggy pants, and like, who are you, dude? Yeah. You're on the wrong side of the track, dude. Yeah. The wrong place. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, but it was, a, it still was a, it's a different scene. But um, back then, dude, I was... I'm glad. 
my belly is up high, the Lord's beautiful. Yeah. So many great guys, so many great people. Yeah. Spiritually great people come to help, support. Yeah. And inspire. Because I know those, a lot, all the people, all the kids that they got inspired by us. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, wow, man. It's a great help right there, man. Thank you. Right, because like even you being in Burn Down for me, it was an inspiration. Like Steve inspired me a lot too as a drummer, and it's like hearing you, and then like seeing that you're just a regular person, that you're my neighbor, that you're like right there. I have like this close contact with you. That I was like, okay, everyone's a person still, you know. And I've dealt with like, I mean, I've 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 even worked with like Eric and 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 done like a um, substitution drummer. For like, bring me the horizon, for example. Oh, okay, okay, you know, sure. and that scene we opened up for like Kitty and stuff and toured around that. And like that scene is just like a whole. Like I, I there's no respect. Yeah. There's no respect. Yeah. You know, and so like when I'm, I'm coming from like you know things like this where we're like, you know, uh, beyond reason and locked in a basic can see just throw us in the van with them. Like you're gonna come and play this show because <laughs> this band like you know canceled out or 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 here come record this because this band canceled or yeah, whatever. Yeah, that you was know? something else. Like, you <laughs> you know? Know? We're like, yeah, what? sure. You know? <laughs> so you know, like again, like we you don't, I don't, man. I don't see that anywhere else. And I've been yeah. a part of like so many different kind of music scenes. I don't see it any like the way that I experienced it in the Bronx. I haven't experienced it anywhere else. Wow. You know, so that's I'm super grateful for that. And if I find those connections, again, like the way that I found those bands will work. Absolutely. You know, because we didn't have to do a lot. We just got together, put the energy in, and then just happened. Yeah. You know? But they, and, and, and we did it fucking with no money. Yep. You know? And so, like, I deal with a lot of people that are like, oh, oh you need money or you need this. And it's just like, yeah. Uh, I mean, I understand time, money, or, or, or energy are sure. the three things. If you don't invest that into what you're doing, whatever you're doing, you ain't doing nothing. Yep. yep. You know? And so, like, you know, living in Spain, we have a lot of people that, that are afraid to take those steps or are afraid to even think about it in that way. Yeah. You know, so it's kind of like, oh, come on, you guys. <laughs> we can do it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> but it's a lot more challenging to yeah. to get the same kind of dedication that I got when when I worked with people here, that's for sure. You did it with a, a hand-me-down drum kit without a snare drum, like... Yeah. Yeah, I was like, I'm playing. Yeah. They're like, what are you playing? I'm gonna fucking play the table if I got to, you know, but I'm playing. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I, I know there's people who started out playing on cardboard boxes. Yeah, buckets. Or buckets, box. too, you know? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> That's yeah. right. Yeah. I know that. I know yeah. that. You <laughs> even played, like, house parties with cardboard boxes or buckets, you yeah, know? Yeah, That's, yeah, yeah. So oh yeah, yeah, do. yeah, yeah. Like Adi would always stand in front of the drum set. Remember, because it would always move. All the time. <laughs> I like I don't know. I have because I'm not a. You know, I wasn't. I I, I was just emotion. Yeah. You know, so when I played, I played, yeah. and like my drums will always fall apart when I play. <laughs> you know, always, and so I would always have like my my friend Adi would always just like sit in front of my drum set and stuff at the parties or at the bars and stuff. You know, symbols fly somewhere. Yeah, <laughs> symbols flying everywhere, freaking drums falling over high rises. Forget it. You know, it was wow. like destruction. Wow. <laughs> Now I have better technique. <laughs> I did oh. break a stick the first time in like four years, <laughs> like a couple of weeks ago. It happens. <laughs> yeah, I <it> did. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Wow. Well, um, well, thank you both so much uh, for sharing all of these incredible stories. Yeah, thank you for uh, having us. Really yeah. appreciate it. Thank you.